and we'll queue up the rest of the juniors. All juniors, if you can check in over for rollout, please. Let's get all the rest of the juniors over for rollout. Grab your gear and line up so you're ready to go. Thank you. Rest of our juniors, please. All juniors checking in for rollout.
All right, that should be wrapping up for a rollout. For juniors, everyone should have now checked in for rollout. If you are a junior, we are just short of starting racing here, so make sure we're all ready to go. Stream is up and running if you're online. Thanks for joining us. Hello there. We're getting started with some junior focused racing here. The first hour of our Saturday is all junior racing. And uh, right around six o'clock, they'll be right before that, hopefully, a short break to reset ourselves. The first adult category to race today, we have a Masters Madison that's set to kick off at 6 p.m. We'll be running the stream the whole time. We got Jessica's Unique Bites here. So if you're in person, want to pick up some food, they're getting warmed up still. The grill's getting heated up for some burgers. And of course, the best fries out of a food truck around here in the Pacific Northwest. They'll be ready shortly. Leslie's here ready to pour some beverages for you. We got Lo Locust Ciders again in Postdoc Brewing. And of course, some great racing. We're almost ready to get started. This is our third session for Fred's Race, the Regional Track Cycling Championships of the Pacific Northwest here at the Jerry Baker Memorial Velodrome. Just about ready to get started. the track off here and are we ready for our meeting and we are very good that whistle is signaling for an on-field meeting please could all of our riders in this junior session join up for a meeting all junior riders we're going to gather up for a quick meeting before racing begins junior riders please gather up for a brief meeting on the infield thank you Okay, I think with the juniors scattering, that's our signal that we can bring our first group up. So they're getting their gear ready. We're going to have our youngest group of juniors up first. The 10 through 12 category is called to the rail for chariot heats. Not to the rail, but to the start area. And we are running these in heats. So we're going to be calling these up, these riders up heat at a time. Welcome here. This is the beginning of our third session of racing at the Velodrome. If you're here joining us in person, thanks for cheering on the riders. If you're out in the stream, land and joining us on YouTube or Facebook. Welcome and thanks for tuning in. Looks like we have two groups that are going to race. In the first team, we got Tegan Lingwood, Keegan Fairbanks and Cody Chang. And on deck is Javi Meha, 
Gavin Fairbanks, Joshua Hunter, and Charlotte Westover. So that's how we're going to get this started. Right after the 10 to 12 year old chariot heats, 13, 14 year olds, you should be ready to go too. Holders needed. Holders needed for a chariot. Our littlest kids on bikes are gonna go for one fast lap around the track and do their best to see if they can uh, place into an upper final. I believe it's gonna be up and down. Let me take a look here how, we, how we're doing this. Two go to the major, everyone else to the minor, very good. So we'll give a chance for everybody to race a second time. <laughs> you got there, Keegan Fairbanks right in the middle. There's Tegan down in the sprinter's lane and Cody Chang on the outside up by this, the rail. <laughs> uh oh, I don't know if they know to stop. <laughs> I'm not sure the kids know to stop, but they're getting whistled. There they go. They figured it out. They're coming back around. Mama gave a little too enthusiastic of a throw there, so we got to try one more time. <laughs> nice. Just trying to give her wings on her first try out of the track. All the way up here, guys. All the way over here. Come back up. We're going to give it another go. Nice job. All right. We'll give this another go. <laughs> nice. And now we're, now we're all warmed up. Now we're really ready to go. All right, try number two for our first heat. Nice job, here we go. <laughs> the test of the throwers. One lap around the track and two will get to race in the major and everyone else gets to race again in the minor final. So everybody gets two chances today in our quick chariot heats. King doing a great job on here. Be our first one across the line. Nice run in this heat. And Cody also doing a great job here today. Race again in the major. And Tegan for her first race here at the Velodrome after graduating from Camp Velo. We'll race again. Nice job. Let's bring up Heat B. Should be Charlotte Westover in lane four. Going all the way up there. There we go. Josh Hunter is going to be in lane three right next door. Getting a look on the stream now at Charlotte on the outside on that orange bike and the orange helmet. Got a good theme going on there. A couple of Jerry Baker Juniors right in a row here. Four of them. There's Joshua Hunter in lane three, number 103. Gavin Fairbanks, 116, is already ready to go. And 101, that's Javi down there in lane one. All right, here we go. Two get to race in the major. Ooh, got a good look in that time. All right, two will ride again in the minor. So everybody gets to race again. Just one time around the track.
Heat A for the 13 to 14 year olds on deck is Keeglin Robinson, Gavin Newman, Luke Tallman. All right, Charlotte, first across the line. Nice job. Number 116 is Gavin Fairbanks looking quick. And 103 and 101 coming in next is going to be Josh Hunter and Javi Meja coming in for a nice chariot race. 13, 14 year olds, here we go. Heat A. Robinson out here, number 224 on the outside. There's Gavin Newman in the middle, 422. And down there, number 118 is Luke Tallman. A couple of riders coming up from the Portland area for the Epic team. The East Portland Youth Cycling Squad has two riders in the group and one rider for the Jerry Baker Juniors team. Again, two get to go to the major. The Portland riders getting a big jump here. Gavin Newman takes the early lead, hitting the back straight. And looks like our two speedsters out of the Portland area we're gonna race in the major. And we'll see Keeg again in the minor final. Nice job. Let's bring up Heat B. On deck is the 15, 16 year old scratch race. On deck, 15, 16 year old scratch race. On the outside, we got Anton riding a number 429, getting set to go. That's Lucy Dorer, number 117 in the blue, wearing the Gene Johnson Cycling Team colors. Luna Mendoza next up in number 110, and Andrew Newman down in the sprinter's lane, number 114. Another rider from the Team Epic squad. Off we go, one quick lap, and two more riders to go to the major. Big turn of speed here for a rider down the sprinter's lane as Andrew's got a hot start. Anton's making a run at him now, the rider with that orange bike catching onto the wheel. Needs to try to get into that draft a little bit. If Anton can get down the sprinter's lane, he might get a more benefit from the work of the rider in front of him. But right now, these two are just going to get to go again to the major. Nice job for these two. Nice work. And here comes our next two finishers. 117, Lucy Doran doing a great job. And there's number 110, Luna Mendoza, to finish up the heat. 15 to 16 year old scratch race to the rail. Up next, please, will be the scratch race for the youngest juniors. So 10 to 12 year old category is gonna be set to start next. If you're joining us online or just walking to the park because you heard something going on, welcome. This is Fred's Race, session number three of four. We got one more tomorrow morning. This one is starting with a junior-focused hour. There's the sign to roll out for the neutral. You might be saying, what's Fred's Race? Well, it's the regional championships. Well, why do you call it Fred's race? It's a memorial race named after Fred C. Rayberger. After his passing, it sort of was not the spark we needed to sort of create a race in this region to memorialize his positive energy and the influence he had on bringing riders out to the track, bringing riders onto the road, wherever it was, Fred would try to bring more people onto their bike and get them to get outside and enjoy the sport. So we kind of said it a lot in those first couple of years, Fred would go. That was kind of the whole idea, get you out on your bike and. You too should be a part of this. So we represent all of our groups. We try to get as many medals out as we can and celebrate as many athletes as we can. The regional championships representing the Pacific Northwest region. 
And right now we're focusing on the kids for the first hour of our third session, Jets Junior Racing until six o'clock. And this is our 15 to 16 year olds now getting around for their neutral in a fairly quick scratch race, just five laps on the lap cards. And the whistle from our official team gives the sign that it is time to race. Five to go. 328, Merrick Gallagher will start off for the proceedings on lap number one, showing us how to race the entire racing surface. Nice move here off the front as uh, we've got a bit of a break. Still a couple laps still to go. The chase is on. Henry Armstrong with the big move encourages JC Pyle to chase him down. So the rider with that red helmet Gets things going here and forces the other riders to catch back on. Nice early move at two to go. There's Logan trying to work his way back into it as well. For the medals, it is a separate competition now. So really they've separated themselves. We've got four junior men in this 15 to 16 category fighting over on the back straight. And here on the home straight being led out by Danny Scoville, number 10. The junior women sort of created their own little mini field as well. So we're gonna have a little easier time actually seeing the, the podiums sort of play out in front of us. Both groups being relatively static at the moment, kind of watching each other. Our women's group of five kind of checking out as one starting to pop away down the sprinter's lane. Let's take a look at our, <laughs> our junior men here on the home straight as Henry Armstrong is hearing the bell first. He's up and out of the saddle trying to pick up the sprint. And we'll watch these guys go all the way on the track and see how this one plays out. This is for their Points for the Omnium, I suppose, really, since the juniors are being Omnium this weekend. Mila on a big move there. We'll see where she ends up here shortly. She's sneaking away from the girls. On the back straight. And here comes JC Pyle coming out of the field for a quick finish. Gallagher next across the line. There's Logan, nicely done for the junior boys. On the back straight, Mila has taken the early attack and she's trying to sneak away from the field. They may have given her a little too much room. She's still trying to stay away from it. Here comes the speedster, Scoville, trying to close it in quickly. Ooh, Scoville coming in fast. Mila, what a great move. Nice racing, you guys, well done. So it'll be Scoville and Gilcrest lying in right at the line at about where Mila was. I think she might have been third in that one unofficially. Pretty close though. 10 to 12 year olds, your scratch race is coming up now. And all those racers are off the track, so it's safe to bring you up. 10 to 12 year olds, come on to the rail. Let's get you up here. 10 to 12 year olds, to the rail, please.
All right, off we go for the neutral. We'll get our group all together, and when they come around, we'll get them started out of turn four, if they're close. Looks like they're figuring out. If you're rolling up to the Belgium, checking out what's going on, this is just 10 to 12 year olds racing on the Velodrome today. So we've got junior focused racing today as part of our regional championships. The whole Fred would go mantra is about getting as many people on the track as possible. This Velodrome is very well known for its ability to uh, encourage young riders. It's a very gentle sort of bank in the corners. It's a great facility to learn in. We got great staff around here and great coaches that want to help young riders. And part of that, too, is giving them their featured moment to be out here on the track racing and celebrating them and giving them medals and doing all that stuff, too. So here we are in Fred's race, the regional championships, and we've got our 10 to 12 year olds in a scratch race for five laps. All right, they get the whistle and racing's underway. The scratch race for the young kids. Whoa, first lap move here. And five to go. The rider wearing bib 111 is Keeg Fairbanks moving quickly in that speedy yellow bike. No young rider that might want to jump out here and take a couple fast laps at the track. We have a couple ways to get started. The junior try of the track classes are free. They're just an hour long and you get a track bike with your sign up. And the kids come out here. There's no racing going on. It's really just a opportunity for riders to try out what it feels like to be on a track bike and see if they want to do more. Beyond that, we have what's called Camp Velo, an entire week long camp. Register online. You show up Monday through Friday for a couple hours each day and get instruction and support. You get some practice races in simulated racing so the riders get comfortable with being in groups and by the end of the week they're invited to start participating in junior racing just like this which we happen to have every single week on one of our weeknight races usually on monday nights it's been that for the last several years so camp velo and the junior try the tracks courses can be found online at velodrome.org here's our lead two riders crossing the line charlotte westover number 109 it's working with Keeg there, number 111. Nice job to the two of them. Let's see where the rest of our field is. Look at all those green kid bikes. <laughs> the youngest field here today, doing a great job. That's 116, leading out a couple riders in the chase. Gavin Fairbanks, bringing around a group of riders here. And your leader is seeing two to go. Two to go for Charlotte and Keeg. Racing continues today with, uh, we'll have some more of our adult categories, the uh, masters, elite riders, all coming back. We got some of our older juniors competing today. That'll start sometime at six or later, depending on how long this session takes. This is just sort of a short, pre-session to the race tonight. We've got just the youngest riders for the next couple of minutes here. A few more scratches to get through and then some chariots coming up soon. Bells ringing. One to go, one to go, one to go. All three of these riders have one more lap to go. Charlotte Westover in the orange helmet currently at the lead of the lap. Keeg on her wheel, the rider with the all black and that yellow bike. Ooh, big move on the back straight. Looks like been saving up for this one as Keeg's going to make the big move onto the home straight. One to go, guys. One to go. Here comes a couple more 10 to 12-year-olds getting the one to go mark. And here comes Keeg finishing up now. Along with Charlotte finishing up first and second across the line. Everybody else is still finishing up their lap. Here comes one more finishing their lap. Tegan coming up to finish down this lap. Nice job. Whoop. 
There's still Gavin in the lead next to come around the corner. Let's see between these two. They'll have a nice little match sprint. Whoa. Look at this. Head to head. Ooh, the grit. Oh, I think 116 barely holds on down in the bottom. As uh, Cody made that a great race with Gavin. Head to head. And Javi leading things out number 101. Holds on to it as Joshua chasing him down. Great race for all of our youngest riders. They can exit on the back straight, and our next group can come to the rail, please. 15. Our 13 and 14 year olds, pardon me, are coming down to the rail for their scratch race on deck. We're already back to the chariot finals for the youngest group, so. 10 to 12 year olds, catch your breath, be ready. We're gonna start with chariot finals pretty quick. We'll go minor final and then major final for the chariots. I see a question on the live stream. I will answer that during the neutral lap. I might have missed it. Thanks, David, for your question. I will pick that up here in a little bit. All right, current group's going out for their neutral. This is another quick five lap scratch for the 13 to 14 year old juniors. So we got someone on the YouTube stream popping a question in the live chat asking who's Fred. And uh, yes, that's a great question because we are in the middle of Fred's race. Fred C. Rayberger was a local cyclist and we remember him mostly for the positive attitude and his ability to get people out on a bike. So he was one of those kind of people that would encourage you no matter what kind of your background was, what your skill level was, your age was, he was the person to kind of come up and say, you know what, you should come out and race. You need to come out and do this thing. You're gonna have a great time and would be this force that would bring people out into the sport and uh, was just this infectious positive energy. So when he passed a few years ago, this was uh, what now, eight, eight, nine years ago, we brought Fred's race into being, I believe. We're not yet to the 10 year, 10th uh, running of this event yet. But since then, uh, we brought this event into reality and a lot of the folks that knew Fred closest were really excited to create this event. And since then, it's just become an annual tradition. We run this race and celebrate his legacy. And part of that legacy is making sure that everyone feels supported and celebrated as best as we can. So there is a portion of making sure that we have all these categories. We have our master's category, so every age is represented. We got the juniors out here on the weekend. We have as many different disciplines, right? The sprints, we got Kieran's, we got the Omnium, we got points, all the different types of formats you could expect. So, and as well as time trialing, all those things are all represented. So it's a full gamut of championships so that's kind of the whole background on the story. And uh, since that all started several years ago, we just continue to keep this tradition up here at the Velodrome. I'm really proud to be the host of this great tradition. Our thanks also to continues to go out to Eric Johnson, who was the central organizer in the first couple of years. If he's out there watching, our thanks to him for doing all the work he did to make this thing start in the first place, along with Fred's family, extended family, stepping up big time. This group here on the track, 13 to 14 year old juniors, is forming a little field here, sort of buying their time for the time being. Now you bet, David. If anybody else wants to pop in questions on the YouTube channel, we'll keep our eyes on it. We're not posted to it 24 seven, but I do tend to watch the live chat. If people uh, have any questions, you can get there. Even if you're here in person and would like to use that as a Q and A, you can pop on at veldrum.org slash live. And uh, we'll keep our eyes on there if there's anything that comes up. Kids on the track right now are seeing three to go. That's Luna Mendoza at the lead of the field, number 110. Got two lanes of traffic. That means that the field isn't really at top speed yet. They're moving at a kind of a casual cruising tempo right now.
All these kids got started here just by signing up for a class or one of the Camp Velo experiences. They just came out to the track and said, let's do this thing. Many of them have also made the jump to be part of our local Jerry Baker Juniors team if they're locals. Got a couple of riders coming here today from the Portland area that have organized what's called the East Portland Youth Cycling Team or EPIC. And uh, they're riding in a black, they've got some pink and blue on their jerseys. In fact, one of their members now just coming to the front, number 118 is Luke Tallman. The rest of the field comprised of competitors of that Jerry Baker Juniors team. It's not required for a young rider to be on a team, but there are a lot of benefits to, of course, racing alongside of colleagues that you train with and share resources with and have a small micro community with. I guess micro is not quite the right word as Jerry Baker Jr. is now over 40 riders. Coming into the bell lap, this is the one to go mark for the scratch race. First rider across the line, our winner. 118, Luke's still down the sprinter's lane. 429 right alongside of him. Looks to be Anton. And here comes the speedster from down south. It's Gavin Newman. He knew exactly how to time that thing. He came wide around the line and just lined it up out of turn two. That's the way to race this velodrome. Nice move down the back straight. He's been racing here a couple weekends this summer, coming up from Portland, looking really good this season. Gavin with a good finish. And here comes Anton speeding around. Ooh, great sprint for third. 118. I think unofficially just barely ahead. I'll give the nod third across the line overall to Luke. That was Gene Johnson cycling rider Lucy Dorr that was right there next door. Chariot finals. I think we got the minor for the 10 to 12 year olds coming up, followed by the major. So chariot finals, here we go. It's gonna come up fast. But it's Javi in lane one, Tegan in lane two, and Joshua in lane three, according to my list. So come on over. And then on deck is Cody, Keegan, Charlotte, and Gavin for the major final. They're followed by the 13 to 14 year old chariot final competitors. That's looking at number 103. If you're on the live stream, Josh Hunter getting set to go. Next door is Tegan Lingwood getting clipped in and ready. And then down in the sprinter's lane, 101 is Javi set to start. Here they come. Good sprint here. And that's Joshua Hunter, 103, making the big dig. Great job for all of our finishers on their chariot race. And here comes the major final. I got four more riders coming up.
All right, great fast racing here for this group. That was Keith Fairbanks coming across the line first. Charlotte Westover next across the line. Cody and Gavin again making it fast. Third and fourth across the line. Nice job for the youngins. 13 to 14 year old chariots. Minor first, followed by the major. We're gonna start with Keegan, Lucy, and Luna. Bring that up for the minor, please. In lane one should be Keeg. Uh, Lucy is in lane two and Luna up in lane three. Luna Mendoza getting a good look here on the stream in the outside lane. That's Lucy Dora in the middle. And down the sprinter's lane, number 224 is Keegan Robinson. <laughs> Whoa. Uh-oh. Heads up. We have a clip out, clipped out of the bike here. We're going to get a loud restart maybe. No, maybe not. Up, 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 up. They're going, okay. And here come our fast fishers. Looks like Keeg run around the corner. Nice job. Lucy, a nice recovery there. And uh, here comes Luna. Well done. And our major final, come on up. On deck, 15 to 16 year olds, be ready for your elimination race. Andrew is in lane one, Gavin in lane two, Anton in three, and Luke is four. Number 118 on the outside, 429 there in the second lane, 422 down there in the second spot and down in the sprinter's lane is 114. That's Andrew down the bottom. Gavin next door, 422, ooh, big toss there. Anton in the back position, trying to get himself back up there. Gavin with the quick start, still accelerating nicely. Anton trying to make a run up to the th second spot now as he runs around on the outside. Still Gavin leading things out. And Gavin looking good here. He'll fly in for the finish. Anton chasing nicely. Just couldn't quite get the start, I think. Had a little too much ground to make up. It'll be Gavin at the top of this one. Then Anton and Luke. Fifteen, sixteen year olds are called to the rail for the elimination. Thank you. Three races left. We've got an elimination, then two points races, then a guaranteed 15 minute transition time of open track. We're gonna try to get these podiums going for the young riders. So the, uh, 14, the 13, 14 year olds and the 10 to 12 year old podiums should be going on before we start tonight's racing.
Elimination race, the last rider across the line, every single lap down to the last rider will get pulled from the event. So it's gonna be eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. All right, racing underway. Next time, last ride across the line, eliminated. So really the action here, for the most part, we are watching the back of the field. It is, again, a little bit of that confusion of two fields within one as we are scoring our junior men and junior women separately for the podium purposes. I will call the name and the number of these riders as they are called by our officials team. And 201, already aware, but getting the call of Miller will come out of the race this time. In the front of the field down the back straight, you see that's JC in the all black with the black helmet, sitting at the front of the group. A little early move from the riders at the back of the field are starting to kind of swarm around and reposition themselves. Not wanting to be left out in this race. Well, I can tell the uh, these riders want to stay in at least another lap. 205 is Holslander. Another thing I can tell is Jessica's unique bites is totally up to heat now. I can smell the the grill that is tantalizing <laughs> working our way all down to the last rider so several more riders here to pull we'll just keep on eliminating each lap the longer you stay in the higher your place oh down the sprinter's lane might be in trouble 202 is get the official call that's Bella coming out this lap. It's Henry Armstrong in the furthest back position now, along with JC Pyle. So they've got a the long way to go around the field. As Scoville has now assumed the position of the lead out, sitting at the front of the group. Right on the red helmet, Armstrong sweeping around. It might leave out another one of our junior girls in a bad spot at the bottom. Looking for room. 22 is Lucy Gilcrest is trying to pinch her way in. Just couldn't quite get enough space. 22. Scoville will slot up into the back of the field. Effectively is the last girl in this group. She's got the gold. She might already be volunteering herself off the back is what it looks like she's doing. That's, you know, that's good smart. She knows what she needs to do. She's a competitor. She says, I got this. It's all right. So I can slow off. Nobody's getting eliminated here, guys. You four are in. We got a volunteer on the back, guys. A volunteer off the back. All four are in. And number 10 doing what she needs to do. She gets eliminated this time, but she says, I've done my job. Down the back straight, these four. Looks like Logan's down the lowest part of the track. He's going to move up a little bit. Slot himself in behind Merrick Gallagher. He sits right alongside of JC. That's a lot of uh, short lane that's being left open right now. There we go. JC running at it. 456, Henry Armstrong. I believe we'll be eliminating one more as they're hearing the bell. 
We're down to our third th a group of three. This will be another elimination in the bell to signal the one to go. Logan going down low again. Oh, not quite enough. Yeah, 155, Logan, JC Pyle, and Merrick Gallagher. We've been watching each other this whole race, racing a match sprint from corner two. JC takes the short lane down a little bit quicker. Merrick gets the advantage of the wheel if he can get to it in time. Otherwise, he's got to climb his way back into this race. JC with a little bit more acceleration is still holding off the charge. It looks like Pyle come around the corner. We'll take this one as well, and a nice race for these two. Coming onto the track now, the youngest riders are 10 to 12 year olds for the points race. That's right, 10 to 12 year olds. We got the youngins coming up for a great points race this time. A three by three, nine lap event on deck. 13 to 14 year olds for their four by four points race. Off we go into the neutral. The race will start out of turn four if they're all together. So riders will want to stay together on this neutral. This is a points race, so lead riders on the sprint laps will get five, three, two, and one. Five to the first rider, three for the second rider, two for the third, and one for the fourth. Race is just like the big kids do. Five, three, two, and one. And then on the final sprint, they'll get double points, 10, six, four, and two in that order. Rider with the most number of points at the end wins. So you've got to ride strong, and sometimes you might even have to pay attention to the math, because that could matter in the end. Session three carries on next with uh, points racing for the 13 and 14 year old juniors. A junior podiums presentation then a minimum of 15 minute open track time that will precede the remainder of the schedule. Confused by all that information, don't be afraid to go to belgium.org slash live where you can see the race schedule. That link should also be in the video description if you're out there watching in YouTube or Facebook land. And there's the whistle. Racing's underway. Nine laps to go. Three sprints in this points race for the youngsters. Javi gets things going. If you got a kid even younger than this 10 to 12 year old field, we can get you started with the Kitty Kilo. Come out on a Friday night and sign up for a free lap around the track in front of the uh, audience. Get all the fun of being here at the track and being part of the velodrome. They can bring a push bike, training wheels. As long as they got the safety of the helmet on and they got uh, some form of mobility to get around the track on a set of wheels. We will let them out here and we'll figure out how to have fun with it. Our youngest kids oftentimes just go on the home straight. You can find out more about Kitty Kilo on our website at the Kitty Kilo link, or of course, just show up on a Friday night. First and third Fridays of the month, we always are running the Kitty Kilo. That's Charlotte taking the lead for a moment. Rider 109 with the orange helmet swings up and out of the way. They'll be getting their first spell next time they come around to get the uh, first points of the race. First bell of the race. Points next time to the leaders.
points next time. Here's to find our first points getters and a nice sprint side to side here. Oh, good run at it. Looks like it'll go down to 111. It's Keegan Fairbanks takes the uh, five points. Charlotte will take three. Gavin Fairbanks for two points. And I think 106 Cody will pick up the one point. Masters Madison, sign up. If you forgot to get your name on a list, we need to confirm that you're racing tonight. If you did not put your name on a board confirming your participation in the Madison teams, please come on over to the official stand on the infield. Masters Madison competitors checking in. If you did not sign up tonight for Master Madison, we need you to come on over to the official stand, please. And thank you. The Configuration of the race right now is two riders off the front. Your two leaders with the most number of points after that first sprint. They're on the back straight right now, halfway across it. Over in turns one and two, we have what appears to be the pursuit of two more riders. 116 is Gavin Fairbanks, I believe, in the red helmet, trying to work as hard as he can to stay close and maybe drop the rider right behind him. The bell's ringing for our leaders. Points next time around. Points next time. That's right, bell's ringing as well for Gavin, who's currently in the spot for two points if he can keep his position. And there's Cody chasing on. Here's Joshua and Javi working side by side. And our leader is coming on the home straight now. Looks like he's trying to get, or excuse me, uh, Keegan Fairbanks, yes, trying to find another five points. We'll do so, and Charlotte will find three, doubling up their points. And that looks to be Gavin on his way to pick up two more, doubling his points as well. So it should be uh, 10 points to our leader, six to the rider in second. Picking up two more, should be Gavin here, putting him at four points. And Cody rounding the corner, should pick up one more and bring his total up to two. And our leaders just caught a couple, so they go down the lap, but now they are eligible. If they can stay in position here, they might, they could pick up some of the points if they'd like to. So 103 and 101 down a lap, but they're now eligible to sprint for points, so mind that. And we've got uh, our two leaders, the rider in the black helmet with that yellow bike is the rider with the most number of points. She has 10. Shot right behind her with five, uh, six points, excuse me, is in second. The rider with the orange helmet and orange bike. Only one sprint remaining and it's coming up quick. They're gonna be getting the bell. A couple more might be getting caught here before the bell's ringing. And it looks like Cody there finding himself caught. Bell for one to go. Leader is getting one to go. As it stands, Gavin's still not caught, so I think he's got another full lap to go. The leaders on the back straight, the riders in the, with the orange helmet is the front of the race right now. Here goes Keegan Fairbanks on the attack. All right, and with that, we can say everybody's finishing up right now. So everybody's finishing up right now. So Gavin, you're finished up here as well. Nicely done as these two finishers doing a great job today racing. It'll be 111 picking up the most points and 109 right on her tail. 
Cody here with the solo ride, working real hard today. Nice job, 106, and making a fast sprint at the end. <laughs> yeah, Javi and Joshua are going head to head. Keep on those bars. There you go. All right. A little bit of showmanship there. 13 to 14 year olds, come on down for the points race. Where were you? <laughs> They're all tired. After this race, there will be that guaranteed 15 minute time as announced. Reminder, again, there will be 15 minutes of track time after this race is over. We'll also try to scoot in some junior podiums for the 10 to 12 year olds and the 13 to 14 year olds and the 15 to 16 year olds because they're done as well. Roger that. So all those younger kids we've been focusing on here in this short kind of pre-session to tonight's racing, the junior focus session, I should say, we'll get podiums before we bring on more of our racing. We'll try to get that, those podiums going as quick as we can. On the back straight, we've got our final group for the juniors, the 13 to 14 year olds racing in this points race, a 16 lap com competition. Four by four means four sprints every four laps. First bell at 13 to go. Same rules apply for this group as the last. Five, three, two, and one to the leaders. Double the points on the final sprint. And the whistle sounded. Racing is underway. Anton and Gavin setting the front. Number 422 is uh, Gavin Newman for Team Epic out of uh, East, the East Portland Youth Cycling Team making their way up the I-5 drive to join us again here this weekend. They were out here a few weeks ago during our junior takeover event and stayed through for the 4th of July. It's always great to have our Portland youth riders coming up here and competing. Great to see them this season. A newly organized team and new kit. And they're racing out there with a bunch of our local team riders, the Jerry Baker Jr. team. 118, that's Luke at the front now, taking the lead of the lap. No points on these laps. They're just setting the tempo and kind of testing each other out. The bell will signal when we're on those point sprints. This is Andrew Newman trying to pick things up quickly. Seeing 14 to go, Bell next lap. A big attack here from number 114. Trying to apply some pressure and pain to the field. We'll be hearing the bell this lap. Maybe just trying to set himself se and separate himself a bit from some of the other sprinters. After that effort, we'll sit back up and try to maybe reset into the field. Lucy Dora takes the lead spot now for the Gene Johnson cycling team. That's the all blue squad here now at the front. Lucy getting the bell first. Points next time around. Looks like Andrew might have been doing burning a match for the uh, training purposes as he's pulling off the tempo a little bit now. We watch back onto the back straight though as Lucy leads out the sprint to start. Now Anton takes the lead spot, Gavin falling on his wheel. The two that have been probably the most active at the front, along with Lucy. Anton Cruzen, Gavin coming in hot for the five. Anton for three. We'll get two points for Lucy. One more on the board. This goes to Luke, number 118.
Appreciate the comment there on the YouTube channel. So a little bit ago, we got great coverage. Thank you very much. We're trying our best. If you wouldn't, if you agree with uh, that comment, you think we're doing a good job around here trying to bring the footage to folks, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. It does help us. We are on our way to 1,000 subscribers too. So if you wouldn't mind hitting that button, it doesn't cost you a thing. It does help us as we continue on our way towards 1,000 subscribers and building the campaign that is great track racing in the Pacific Northwest broadcasted everywhere so people can learn about this great sport and get involved and wherever they're at they can cheer on their favorite riders on the back straight we've got a group of three making up the lead of the race as Gavin pulls up to the right and gives room for Lucy to take the lead now she's gonna just keep on forward Luke's trying to catch back onto this thing before the bells ring and he knows he's got a short window of time here Andrew getting back up on the wheel will be part of this lead group down the lap number 118 almost back up there again really trying to claw his way in before the sprint starts Bells ringing in points next time. Anton on the lead, number 429, making the sprint first with Gavin on the wheel, giving Gavin the advantage if he can stick with him. He's going to sit in that draft of Anton and benefit from that all the way around the track. Then all Gavin has to do is move out to the right and come around him. Let's see if they can uh, figure this out as it does look like Gavin's still on the wheel. This should be a move for him to come up and out of the saddle and Swing around the right side, textbook move. Nicely done. Five points for Gavin, three for Anton. Looking strong out here today. Good racing for both. They'll sit up and sort of reset. This is this rider for two points. Lucy again for Gene Johnson cycling team. Looking nice and consistent there. Smooth riding. And Andrew will be the rider to pick up the one point, number 114. Couple more chances for our riders to sprint for points. Next bell at five to go. Your lead riders, Anton and Gavin on the back straight. The most closely matched uh, at the front of this race for sure. It's Gavin in the lead though currently. Let's check where our points totals are. I'll give a quick rundown just so everybody knows where we're at. It is Newman in the lead with 10. Right behind him, Anton has got six, good for second. Lucy Dorr has picked up four points for third. Luke Tallman has one. After that, it's zero or less. Riders looking for points two more times. There is a race within the race again, so we have our junior men. We'll podium separately from the junior women as part of our Fred's race podiums and awards and medals that we do. So at the top of this junior competition for the men, we got those two off the front. It's Gavin. And Anton going head to head right now. Lucy in control of the gold medal for the girls as she's sitting in the back, middle of the back straight right now in the blue. As the two lead juniors catch riders, they're going down the lap. So a couple have been caught since I last announced. The bell's ringing for another set of points. Anton watching Gavin closely. They know that they're in a head to head matchup now. A lot of hesitation. In fact, Lucy's made uh, a lot of headway here thanks to the two of them racing against each other instead of against Lucy. They know what the medals are and how the medals work, so they know who they're supposed to watch. A lot of hesitation here at the front. There goes the sprint. Anton will engage a little later than last time. He's gonna try and power this thing out, forcing Gavin 
Doesn't have quite as much time to respond. Can it work for him this time? Whoa, not quite. Nice. Good change of strategy there from Anton. Made that a lot closer. Gavin still barely gets it, but a great set of sprints for these two. Uh, Anton for three, Lucy for two. And I believe now that's Luke that got the one point, number 118. Another couple riders caught by our leaders. They go back onto the same lap and lose a lap in the process. We'll see on the results. That's a minus 20 in points racing. If you catch the field, in case you get out in front and go around, you'd get bonus 20. That's how we kind of track that here in the points racing. Anton, the orange bike, sitting at the front of the field as a rider in second place overall with nine points. Your leader, Gavin, now takes the lead spot with 15 points. Next rider with points is going to be that Rider in blue, Lucy with six. Plenty more racing to go today in this third session of Fred's race. We will take a sort, short recess from racing action as we will give the track some time to be open for riders to be prepared for the rest of the racing today. So 15 minutes of open track time will follow this race. We're also going to try to do some junior podiums for all the junior riders, 10 to 16 year old. We have junior omniums that I'll be announcing. So really just three sets of podiums to go through for each the men and the women juniors for a total of six. On the back straight still, it's uh, there's our leaders in a group of four. The leaders are actually the third and fourth riders in the group. The leader, Andrew, on the front of the race right now, right behind him. The rest of that field is the front of the race. And there's the bell for our final sprint. Double points this time. 10, 6, 4, and 2 to lead this lap. That's Luna Mendoza, number 110, that's also caught in the mix here. And there goes Anton up and around. And on the back straight, things have uh, developed to the point where Anton's leading out Gavin. Gavin's going to try and do what he did a couple of laps ago and just whip around once again. Nice job between these two. Thanks. The great racing for both of them. Thanks for applauding and cheering on our juniors in this great finish. Our last race today for the juniors. Great job. No one for competitors coming up from the Portland area. Great racing today to Andrew as well. Thanks everybody. All right, folks, one quick announcement. When racing is underway, I gotta remind you, any body parts over the railing, under the railing, any loose clothing or something like that, that causes us some stress. So if you've got feet sticking out or arms hanging over or loose jackets or pets kind of running around or any of that kind of stuff, just make sure they're not too close to the rail or touching the racing surface at all. As uh, it does cause us a little bit of anxiety for the safety of you and for the safety of our riders. Thank you for uh, helping us out with that. We are now technically into a 15 minute pause. So if you're joining us, we are going to be pausing the racing to allow for open track time that now begins. So if athletes want to jump out onto the track, it's open for you to warm up on. A minimum 15 minute period of time now for athletes to warm up. We are going to have some great racing tonight. In fact, if you're on the stream, you see the schedule up on the, on the screen right now. We just have a lot more to get through. We've only done the juniors up there at the top. We now have a lot of great stuff coming up. Masters Madison's gonna be starting up. The elite women have their Omnium today. The elite men have their Omnium today. Masters Racing will be doing some scratch races. It's gonna be uh, some good racing today in Fred's race in this third session. Podiums for juniors will be coming up shortly. I'm gonna get myself ready to not make too much of a tomfoolery of it and we'll get those podiums going for the youngsters out here on the infield. During this open track time, we are going to try to conclude 
some podiums for our juniors. We turned the junior competition into a junior omnium, so we combined their races all together, much like uh, the omnium we're going to see later today, except that's kind of an opposite. If you do well in the junior races, they got one point for being in first, two points for being in second and whatnot, so the rider with the least number of points was our winner. So we'll announce those top three. We're starting with the 9 through 12 category, so our youngest group Our top three finishers, uh, we're going to go first for our female competitors. And then we'll call up our male competitors for their medals. First up, ten to, or the 9 to 12 year old juniors. All right. Looks like we're set to go. Our juniors podiuming here today. 10 to 12 year old girls, the, the female riders up first, our silver medalist today for our youngest group, Tegan Linwood. Where's Tegan? <laughs> and in, and your gold medalist, Charlotte Westover. Congratulations. All right, great racing today for our junior boys in this category. In the bronze medal, Cody Chang. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to try one more time and get Tegan up there. Here we go. Pause, pause, pause. <laughs> okay, one more time. Your junior girls in the 9 through 12 category. Congratulations today. All right, now we're good. Calling up for the our male competitors in this group, the 9 through 12 year old juniors. Up first, our bronze medalist is Cody Chang. Your silver medalist, Gavin Fairbanks. And your champion today, Keegan Fairbanks. <laughs> awesome job and congratulations for some great racing today. Uh, now for our 13 to 14 ju junior girls. Our top three for the 13 to 14 junior girls coming up first. Your bronze medalist for the junior girls today in the 13 to 14 category, Luna Mendoza. Your silver medalist, Keegan Keeg Robinson. And your gold medalist for the 13 to 14 year old girls, Lucy Dorer. Great racing today to our junior girls in the 13-14 group. And for the 13-14 year old boys group, we now have our top three in the bronze medal, Luke Tallman. <laughs> Your silver medalist, Anton Ernchev. And the gold medalist, your champion, Gavin Newman. Hands up there, champs. There we go. Nice job today, and congratulations to our junior boys for great racing. And finally, we are ready to for the 15 to 16-year-olds. In the junior women's category, we got three riders to call up. Junior women, third place today in the Omnium. In the 15 16 year olds, Bella Meha. Your silver medalist, Lucy Gilchrist. And in the gold, Danny Scoville.
Great racing today to our 56-year-old junior girls. And finally, the junior boys, we got our top three in today's Omnium. In third place for the bronze medal, Logan Lee. Your silver medalist, Merrick Gallagher. And in the gold, your champion today for the 15-16 junior man, J.C. Pyle. Hands up, champs. There we go. Nicely done. All right, and that concludes Junior Omnium Podiums. Thank you. We still have some time here for open track. I'm going to take just a moment off the microphone, catch my breath before which should be a very jam-packed session of racing here. Plenty more to come. If you want to pick up the live stream, let people know you're here enjoying some fun racing. Don't forget, you can head to live. The live link, velodrome.org slash live. Appreciate you picking that up. Maybe share it with friends and family, post on social media. Or if just give us a thumbs up while you're here today. A subscribe would always help us as well. You can also find the schedule there at velodrome.org slash live for all of the racing coming up tonight. Food truck is open and serving. It's Jessica's Unique Bites. Back with the great burgers and fries out of the food truck. Come and get your order ready to go over there. 
right now. Or you can come on over to the Beverage Garden or do both. That works, too. Beverage Garden open and serving postdoc brewing and local ciders. If you're here in the park, you want to join us for some fun. We're over here and serving the food and the beverage today. It's Saturday night racing. Our third session of Fred's race is about ready to restart itself. Just a few more minutes of open track time as our athletes getting in some critical warm-up time on the race surface before we start it back up again. We'll restart with this Masters Madison. We've reset it to be a scratch race. So we have done a small schedule change. Just a few more minutes here, time to get a good spot around the track. If you do find your way into the beverage garden, do know that we ask you stay within the confines of that fenced area while consuming those beverages. All purchases within the beverage garden do go benefiting the velodrome, right back in supporting our programs. Our thanks once again to Postdoc Brewing and Locust Ciders for their partnership in the past few years. Racing to begin here shortly. We've got a great program again. If you want to pick that up, head to velodrome.org slash live for the current schedule. You can also see results as things are posted and pick up the link for the live stream now going on YouTube and Facebook. is closing down, open track time is ending. Athletes, please make your way off the racing surface on the back straight. Open track time is over. Some of our young riders making their way out today again. Thanks for joining us for that fun session for junior racing. Our youngest competitor is starting to locate themselves outside the track. Set for some great racing to restart here very soon in our third session of Fred's Race, our regional track championships at the Velodrome. Time for rider meeting on the infield. Rider meeting on the infield, please. Athletes, can you please gather up for a quick meeting on the infield? Thank you. Let's call riders on the infield for a meeting. Thank you, riders, for a meeting on the infield.
All right, and with that, we are getting started with our first race back from our break. Masters Madison, scratch to the rail. Last call for Madison competitors, Master Madison competitors to the rail. To clarify that confusion just a moment ago, yes, the schedule is correct. The start list will reflect the schedule soon. All right, and off we go for the riders in the race. Relief riders going next. All right, so here we have a Madison. This is going to be pretty small in terms of the field size. There's only three teams today, so we shortened the race a little bit. That's all right. We'll still have some fun with it. We love having Madisons. We don't get to do them very often. So riders in the race are going. So these three riders currently represent their team. They have a partner on the track that they'll toss in per their choice when they feel like it's time to make the exchanges happen. Riders in the same color jersey are on the same team. Looks like our... Orange Squad will take at least a lap with uh, Vern Cole in the race before making the exchange. Scratch. Team one is the Riot Group and the Rainbow Trans Flag Colors making the toss in here. That's Matty Hers coming for his buddy Andy Baker. Some of our great sponsors and one way to sponsor at the track actually are these jerseys. So big shout out to all of those sponsorships that have come through this year. Team one and team 12, both sponsored jerseys. The Felt Therabody crew, number, uh, bib number 12 in the bright orange. Thirteen to go. That's Andy Baker for team one now on the lead of the lap. Bobby Walther, the uh, rider in second position. And for team 12, that was Eric Waterman that was in just moments ago with the exchange over there near turn three as he brings in Vern Cole. You notice that riders not making exchanges tend to ride high as Vern shows off here. That's what you do. You go over the top, the exchange happen underneath. This sort of riding sort of requires a little bit of work because there's a, a dance that goes on here for the riders. They figure out the ins and outs of things. A small field like this typically not too difficult to manage. We have been offering some Madison clinics for riders that are interested in getting a little bit more race practice in doing the Madison, getting comfortable with doing the exchange and navigating a field with several riders doing it at once. Very important before you try to show up in a competitive environment, not knowing how to work with those situations.
They saw 10 to go. Seven to go. No exchange for the yellow team of the Felt Therabody squad in bright orange. That's Eric Waterman coming on the back of the field. Andy Baker being brought in by Matty Hers on the back straight. On the size of field, I imagine there was an exchange of plans here, a little bit of a tactical decision to make. Uh, maybe the competition happened a little later. <laughs> Let's ride together. Let's have some fun. Who knows? Either way, they're working on these exchanges, kind of staying cooperatively as a small field of three, seeing six to go, keeping the speed consistent. These riders all demonstrating they're very comfortable with the Madison. Vern offers and doesn't get the hand, so it's going to be Eric Waterman staying in another lap. On deck, the elite women for the first race in their Omnium tonight. And the 17, 18-year-old junior women are part of that field as well. So the elite women, junior, 17, 18, Omnium. First race up next, the Scratch is on deck. Five to go for the Madison. This is where uh, we're getting down to the final laps. We might see some one of the teams decide to make an attack or start breaking things apart a little bit. Seeing four to go. This event, Fred's Race, one of a kind. It's our regional championship. Speaking of one of a kind, we are very one of a kind here in Redmond. This facility, the last remaining of its kind in this region. So we're also proud to host the regional championships and be that last bastion of track racing. You visit... Uh, any of our friends on the other side of the Atlantic over and towards Europe, you'd find that they'd be surprised to hear that there's not one in nearly every major city in our state, let alone just one to represent the entire Pacific Northwest region. But that's where we are right now, why we're working so hard to make sure that our racing programs are top notch, that we're broadcasting the racing to everybody, showing how hard we're working around here and how great this program is. Part of that, of course, is hosting this kind of event where we just bring in competitors from the local region give them the opportunity to demonstrate their skill sets and pick up some medals for their hard work. Seeing two to go. We expected a few more riders in this Master Madison when we first planned it, so not as many as we were hoping to maybe see today, but coming down to the, the final couple laps now, it will be team one that starts to set things up. Team ride group number one, making the big move here and getting the bell. One to go, Maddie. One to go. See if they want to do a high speed exchange. They may want to. It looks like they will. So, team one will try to do the at speed exchange on the back straight, your trickiest maneuver here in the Madison. 
They had some good practice on this last night. Looking good there. And Annie Baker will go off to go collect the win in this scratch race. Team one around the corner. Quick round of applause for our Mazda competitors. Nice job today for our Masters riders. Andy Baker flying in for his win. And looks like team 34, the single mount velo squad, will take the line second just ahead of team 12, the Felt Therabody squad. All right, making sure all of our athletes are safely off the racing service before we call up our next group. All right, signal's going. Women to the rail for the Omnium, your first race. Tuberfields today are competing if they wish to. They signed up for the Omnium competition. This international Omnium format is four races long. It starts with a scratch. Riders earn points in the overall Omnium before their last race. They're gonna start building up points with each event, I should say. And they build up points by doing well in these first three races and concludes with a points race at the end. They'll start their points race with some points already earned based on their finishing order in the first three races. Getting first place in any of these races earns you 15 points. It goes down by one point as you descend from there. So second place would get 14, third place gets 13 and so on. First up, the 12 lap scratch. First right across the line will be the winner. So our women competitors here are out for 12 laps of scratch race, and they did get the go ahead. And the field does have a few junior competitors in there, I believe. And they'll be, for the Omnium purposes, they'll be going for medals separately. But for scoring in the Omnium, we'll score them just like they're in the rest of this field. We'll only sort them out at the end, after it's all said and done at the end of the night. I see number one in there is one of our junior competitors and also number 22, a couple of junior women in the mix. Scene 10 to go. The blue of Heather Nielsen at Center Cycles kit. Number five leads the lap with a teammate around her wheel. Number 88, Catherine Wade Easley. Meg Mountner for the Bryhop team is the rider in third spot, black and red. I know the Bryhop name. That is a Portland area competitor coming up to join us this weekend. It's our most common collaboration, the Portland region, represented pretty well throughout our fields. Nine to go, that's Emily Alexander for the black and green liquid velo team. That gives way for number one. There's one of those two junior women in the field riding for the Jerry Baker Juniors team. In their final couple years enjoying membership of the junior experience <laughs> as our oldest juniors keeping it quick here with the elite women there's hillary luther now to the front another one of our riders coming up from south the portland area riding in that blue i mean they trip up several times now over the weekend and been making this field faster and one more oregonian as well on the wheel there's jenna lingwood number 13. 
tempo picks up a little bit as Jenna finds the front, trying to drive this thing a little bit harder on the tempo, and you can see a little bit of separation for a moment as Hillary actually slots back into the third wheel, noticing a gap. Doesn't want to be too far behind anything that Langwin tries to do. And Hillary back up to the front to lead. Seeing seven to go. Heather Nielsen watching that wheel closely, number five. Never too far from the front in this race so far. Don't recognize her in the jersey, but it looks like Julie Peterson's made back uh, showing today in some different colors. Number 227 is now fifth in that lineup. She's got the rear black disc wheel right in front of the rider in white. We saw what she could do last night with a breakaway from the field. Didn't want to stay with the bunch and try to sprint them, so 227 just made the big attack early. So in terms of style of racer, keep your eyes peeled for that rider because we're getting to that critical moment if you want to try to get away from this field, you're running out of time. It's a short scratch race though, so maybe that's not the calculus here. That's a tough thing to pull off in just a 12 lap scratch. It's almost guaranteed to be a bunch sprint with a distance like that. Jenna at the lead for a moment, swinging up high. Here's Diana Snowblen. Really diversifying this elite women's group. We got a competitor coming down from British Columbia. That's the rider at the front just pulling up out of the way. She's wearing the colors of the velodrome up there in the Vancouver greater area, the Burnaby Velodrome Club. Our friends up there got a couple competitors coming down here this weekend from that velodrome. A lot of rotation here as we work our way down towards the finishing laps. They will be seeing four to go. Good tempo here from Wade Easley, number 88, who wants to keep it fast, seeing four to go. Number one swings up out of the way. The rest of the field also holding their breath for a second and wanting to wait for what comes next. I think Kelly sees an invitation just to kind of keep rolling and force a reaction. In fact, she will. She's up and out of the saddle, dragging some riders out. Jenna Lingwood answers the call. It's just three to go now. Positioning very important here is 22 is trying to work her way up. That's the other junior in the field, Lucy Gilchrist. Then a snowball in the rider in white. Quickly makes her way up to the rear wheel of Kelly Darlene here as she tries to snap back onto the lead position. The British Columbia rider, another one of the speedsters in this field and certainly someone to watch in these last couple laps. Jenna Lingwood also looking very strong here this weekend. Kelly Darlene from the lead, always somebody dangerous. These three have sort of separated themselves into trying to keep the tempo rolling because Kelly does not want to back off at two to go. Wade easily feels the pressure. Number 88 trying to lead this bridge effort back up to the leaders. This should form a new field as six riders kind of join up together at the front of the race. Couple more chasers trying to get back in on the quick tempo that Kelly set and most of the field find themselves back together again. It's just now down to eight riders in this scratch race coming into the bell lap. Snowblin finding herself at the lead of it. That's the bell for the field coming in across the line. Diane Snowblin on the lead. Jenna Lee with second wheel looking over for the attack. The rider from Monster Racing Team 227 trying to position herself. She's got eyes on her now after that sneak attack last night. 227 can no longer. Ride high in the backfield, on the back, ride high. Closing the track, we're closing the track. Okay. We have a rider on the track, riders. We have a rider on the track still, rider on the track. Rider on the track. We're gonna check in with our athletes. I'm gonna take some time off the microphone as we uh, ensure the safety of it of our riders. Please give us a moment to kind of figure out what's going on here and we'll be back with some more information when we have it. Thank you.
Just a quick update for those that are online tuning in. That was a writer, Heather Nielsen, that went down for the longest. She just got a quick round of applause as she was get, uh, under her own power, able to kind of get off the track. We're still checking in with her to see the result of that incident. As we a little bit of movement up track and caused a couple riders to go down. So we're going to ensure we check in with both of our riders from Center Cycles team, it looks like, as they were the ones to experience sort of the back end of that. We will be back with you here shortly. So our riders are getting checked in.
So our two impacted riders is Catherine Wade Easley and Heather Nielsen, both up on their feet and kind of working the way off. So that is at least good news there, and we're thankful for that much. Still in a pause here as we kind of get ourselves organized for what's next. Again, both of our riders are up and starting to work their way back to the tent area. So we'll continue to check in with them, but things are at least, they are under their own power and walking. So that's good news. We will see what's next here in just a moment. All right, we are gonna call our next group to the rail. So it is time for the elite men and junior 17, 18 year old men Come to the rail for the first race in your Omnium. Scratch race, come on up. Good to see you out there on the YouTube, checking in what we're doing here. We did have a little bit of a pause there for injury, but we're coming back at you. And you're very welcome for the good coverage. Thanks for the comment. We're trying our best. That's our joy is to try to bring racing to folks anywhere they are. They can check in with family or friends that are on the track racing or just learn more about this great sport. And the whistle signaling the neutral for this scratch race. This is the first of four races for the International Omnium for the elite men and junior 17, 18 year old competitors. Twenty laps on the lap cards for this one. Good size field here today. I heard twenty-four at the rails, so plenty of riders in this international omnium today will make for a fun set of races. Riders work on a sort of a campaign that starts with this first race and every race after this counts towards their start in the final points race. So if you haven't watched International Omni before, I'll make sure to kind of walk you through it as this whole event unfolds. And the whistle signaling the beginning of the first race of this International Omni, it's the scratch. A race for the finish line after 20 laps and Andy Baker wants to get it started right now. Number four, excited for today's International Omni. Ludo Max from Beat Cycling, number 35 with the uh, sort of turquoise blue and black kit. This is just a couple bike lengths back and keeps this field right on Andy's heels. Andy noticing they're catching, will swing up out of the way and the field carries on with the momentum. Good early speed here from the group at 19 to go. John Bowie here today for the National Army, number three from Liquid Velo. Tends to travel out of town quite a bit. He's very competitive rider on the, on that bike. Good to have him here the last couple of weeks as he's made his presence felt once again in our fields. Certainly someone to watch out for number three. Chris Wilson works his way to the front. This is number 27 for the Found Cycling Guild competing in today's International Omnium. Two wheels back, you got the orange helmet of Henry Kayser coming in today, number 18, a junior rider in this field. 37, Sam Frigo for the Gene Johnson cycling team also up here near the front now. The general formation of the field is just overall quick speed to start the scratch race off, but it's very cooperative speed. You'll notice that everybody's taking their turns to the front. If they don't feel they got the legs to keep the tempo, they'll actually just pull up and out of the way. And so far, somebody's always been there to take the lead spot and keep it going. Here is the laser taking his chance at the front for a bit. 17 to go. Another one of our juniors, David Magidson, in the black for the Jerry Baker Jr. squads. Losing the wheel there, Sam Frigo decides to fall off the tempo for a moment. Sam will also reset. It's the rocket, David Richter, also making his appearance here today in our International Omnium competition. That's number seven at the front of the field. Who is keeping his eye on him, right there behind him, number three. Number 20, Vern Cole, who raced in the Madison with his partner, Eric Waterman. 
He's wearing the colors of Liquid Velo. Right behind one of his teammates in the second wheel spot, he's got that white helmet on. Fifteen to go. Christian Miller wearing number five. He moves out of the way for Maddie Hers. Came hot out of the gate this summer. Number fifteen did lots of victories and success early in the season, and continues to be a very strong overall rider. Snuck in with I think an upset win in the Kieran yesterday, and uh, so definitely another rider to keep your eye on as he's going to find his position midfield now. Never count out the rocket number seven at the front or Carl Hofer is 23 moving up. We've seen Brandon Russell was very competitive in the early goings of some of the races yesterday. So number six, always willing to shake things up. He comes up to the front. One of the juniors on his wheels, Etai Malikoff, another one of the young riders in this group. He swings up out of the way off of the wheel of Brandon Russell's move up track. Mike Dahlin. Number 17 of the Center Cycles crew. We have three impacted riders on our incident here. Once again, we'll take a break to uh, check in with our riders to make sure everybody's doing okay. We're recommending the athletes in this event use the warm-up circle to stay ready for restarting the action as relatively all together. We should be able to pick this one back up after checking in with our current situation here. Three athletes down, and we'll be uh, getting you more information as we get through this. Thank you.
get the information out for those that may be tuning in or just here in general. Uh, the three impacted riders, it looked like Matthew Brady is up and okay and picked up his things. We've got Colin Stott still being checked in with, and then Nolan Adams is down and being checked in on. He's been moving around and whatnot, responding to the crew, but we're checking in with Nolan currently. So two riders still being inspected, making sure they're doing all right, and we are in a pause until further notice. Riders in the elite men and 17, 18-year-old junior men field can still anticipate we will be bringing this race back onto the track shortly.
We continue to be in a holding pattern here. Out of our three, we are still helping Nolan out. At, uh, EMTs have been called, and we have a little bit more time to wait here to make sure that we get his treatment all set away before we restart any racing. Thanks to our EMT squad here, and of course everybody jumping up right away to help and assist. A few more minutes of time here off of uh, the microphone as we await for the next steps. Thank you.
Well, I speak for all of us, and these moments are really tough. We're a tight-knit family, and Nolan is here practically every week racing amongst these uh, riders, and it's tough to watch one of ours go down, but we're glad that he's getting the attention he needs, and he was smiling on the way out, so that's a good sign to see. We'll be restarting here again in just a few more minutes as we sort out what our next plans are. The last race didn't get its chance to finish, so we will be bringing those riders back up. All riders have been taken care of at this point, so we're pretty close to getting restarted. So we may want to prepare yourselves for that race. Our elite men and junior 17, 18-year-old men for the scratch restart coming up quick enough or soon here. Just now waiting on the return of our EMT before we can restart.
All right, competitors in that event, we are now ready for the restart. All riders that were in the Omnium for the men, junior men scratch race are now called to the rail for the restart. All right, we're into a 10 lap scratch. Currently in the neutral, we'll start about turn four if the riders are all together, and then we'll be able to restart this thing, effectively cutting the race in half. We'll give them 10 laps to sort out the scratch. All right, 10 to go, and the scratch race is underway. And nine to go, that's Sam Frigo, number 37, leading things out. Briar scrambling to stay with him. And all in single file formation. Chris Wilson on the lead of the lab at eight to go. Mike Darlene now on the front.
Four to go. That's number 41 coming to the front, Richard Norman. Norman Richard, excuse me. <laughs> Backwards on my list. Number 41, and uh, he moves back in midway into the pack. Already getting close to the end of the short scratch race, so riders starting to fan off the front pretty quickly, although Richter will keep on the pace at three to go. Number 23, Carl Hofer nearing the front. Vern Cole's gonna start motoring ahead now. The rest of the field leaving him a little bit of room here. He looks between the legs to see no wheels right behind him. That's number six starting to pick up the pace though. From the Bernie Velodrome Club, this is number 43 at two to go, making a big move. Bartolome, I believe, Senek. Our rider number 43 in the all black, sending a big move here. He brings Chris Wilson with him, who followed his attack around the outside and finds himself out of the front. Both riders side by side here for a moment. Maybe Sanek's going to want to try and get on the wheel of Wilson before the bell. One to go. It's one to go. One to go. There goes Richard Norman, the rider, number 41. John Bowie starting to line things up. Number three from the middle of the field, as well as number seven. Ooh, tight fit there as some of the riders find their way up and around Normand. But now it's going to be the quick move from Bowie, Richter, and Sam Frigo accelerating really fast up around the leaders. Richter side by side will be Bowie. Richter and Frigo go one, two, three in this scratch race to start off the Omnium. Number 45 and number 27, I think, will finish fourth and fifth. They'll get the most points out of this race to start working towards that Omnium race later tonight. Riders, please exit on the back straight. Masters men, 35 through 50. I believe it's 35 through 49, correction. Scratch race should be coming up next. Oh, sorry. It's what, this is the correct one. <laughs> 35 to 54. So let's call the 35 to 54 Masters men to the rail for their scratch race, please. Ten lap scratch it is. Can we call all Masters men for scratch race that have signed up for a scratch race to the rail? So let's do all Master men for scratch racing to the rail. Yep. You're not late. We're just making a change. Come on over. All Masters. Registered for scratch racing. We'll bring you on over. Not, you're not late. We're just going to bring you to the rail so we can see what we got. Thanks. All Masters men for scratch race. All age categories to the rail. All right, all Masters men for the scratch race will call you up now. Burns like, you kidding me? <laughs> I just raced the last one.
All right, Masters Men for the Scratch Race. 10 laps on the cards. Many races within the race here is our age-based Masters competition. We'll put riders in groups of five-year groupings, and uh, we're going to combine them all together, though, to get a field, and we'll score them separately later. I'll just call it as I see it as the race is going on. This is, again, another scratch race, so racing for the finish line after 10 laps. And the whistle gives a signal that racing is underway. Card show 10 to go. Mike Darlene will take the lead on this very first lap down the sprinter's lane as Mike Ritter will flank him. Number 303 comes down the sprinter's lane right behind him. There's Ritter, number 303, racing today in the field. Number 311 now takes the lead, James Campbell-Harris. Riding in the neon for the Aerotech Racing Team. Giving way for Haldy of Haldy's hand-built wheels. Taking the lead. Riding in the single malt velo kit, number 34. Takes the lead. Eight to go. It's Jonathan Leons, uh, one of our British Columbia riders in the all-white moving up and out of the way, out of turn four. Darlene back at the front on the back straight. Ritter in the pink for Diner Racing tries to get things going again here. Reacceleration on the outside lane takes the lead at six to go. Campbell Harris on the wheel, followed by Matty Hers, number 15, who will stay at the front for just a moment before pulling up and out of the way for both Mike Dahlin and it looks like Haldy is going to move up towards the front as well. Eric Waterman of the Dyna Racing Team, number 19, is also out there. He's now finds himself at the front. Bobby Walther is also racing today in the Single Ball Bills team kit. That's number 44. Four to go. Matty Hur is swinging up towards the rail.
Three laps remaining. There's Haldy again at the front. Number 462 about to take the lead. That's Leon's again, one of our British Columbia riders coming down this weekend. Matty Hur's on the attack, a two to go. Number 15, cruising away a bit. Fern Cole's trying to cover. Double dipping this one is. Mentioned him in the elite men's field as well because he came in hot for this group. And he'll come in looking good here today as well in our massive scratch race. Bell's ringing at the one to go mark. Matty Hur is on the lead, the rest of the field. Back in turn one. Your leader of the overall positioning here, Matty Hurz will take the scratch race. Next closest pursuant looks to be James Campbell Harris in the AirTech Racing Kit. Mike Darlene chasing him down. Darlene. Then Campbell Harris followed by Waterman coming across the line. Everybody finishing up on this lap. Great scratch racing for the Masters men. The officials warning. Oh. Never mind. All right, women competitors in the Omnium, it's time for your second race. Elite women and junior 17, 18 year old women to the rail. To the rail for the elimination. Tempo, excuse me, thank you. I'll be sure to call in order for the elimination. I'm a little scatterbrained today. A little, still a little bit out of sorts, to be honest. So apologies for not being ready for that. This will be run like the international tempo, so we'll have three laps. On the, After that third lap, you'll hear a bell. After that, you'll get one point at the lead of the field each lap after that to the end. All right. All right, off for the neutral. As you just heard a moment ago, announcing for the racers, but now for everybody to clarify the rules, we start in the neutral. They'll have three laps without a point at the front for anybody. Then the, they'll hear a bell after three laps completed. Every lap after that, the first rider across the line gets one point. Rather, the most number of points, of course, will be your winner at the end. This, of course, is only a step towards that final points race at the end. The International Omnium is three races combined into the fourth. As you place well in the first three, you have an advantage coming in to the final race. 15 points to win this race, 14 to get in second, and so on. It just descends by a point for a while. And then uh, riders will continue to add those points to their totals. 
coming into the final race. We have an elimination as well as the third race of the International Army. And this is the tempo just about ready to start. All right, three laps until points. Three laps until the bell, I should say. Then we'll have the first rider getting a point on the fourth lap completed. They're going to be getting the bell. This will remind them that the next time they come around the track, the first rider picks up a point. Every lap from here to the end. First rider on this lap will be, of course, our first leader in this race, but it's going to matter the riders that are able to find consistent effort at the front of the field and earn several of those victories on the lap. Pays off to win a couple of them. That should move you up pretty high in the standings. And a bit of effort here being expended by two riders down the sprinter's lane. 220 gets the official call for one point. Your early leader, Diane Snobelin from the Burnaby Velodrome Club. Jenna Lingua, number 13, flying high right now for her first point. So a tie between Lingwood and Snowballin, who now flies up to the front to try to catch on to Lingwood's wheel. Really setting the tempo in the tempo. These two look like they've separated themselves by a lot of track now as 220 looks to come around for the second point. It's really just Snowblin now and Lingwood that have all the points ahead of them if they can stay away, although there are two riders in the chase. Working against one another here. This is Lingwin wants to get one more. 13 wanting sure she gets away from this with at least a couple points and stays near the top of the tempo. So Lingwin and Snowblin trading blows both with two points. Julie Peterson almost there. She's bringing with her Hillary Luther. So this may become a field of four, maybe. We'll see. As Julie seems to be doing enough work to get up to the back wheel. She proved this is her kind of effort last night when she rode away from the field. So 
She says, yeah, I can go make that bridge. And Hillary says, I sneaked on your wheel, and here I am. A sneaky move for the rider in blue. Following the lead and able to pick up a good one here. Luther, number nine, gets the call. Yeah, that's well played. She kind of found that rear wheel. Julie rode it all the way up to the leads and then said, yep, thank you very much. I'll go take my point. Didn't have to do half of that work or even more. As she'll sit now back into this field and wait to see you at the next opportunity to grab a point. The rider at the front, the one who made the break, Julie Peterson. No points to her name yet, but she's trying to go for one here. Lingwood's trying to hold on to position to find one more herself. And it looks like Lingwood has enough of a run at it. 13 gets the call. She moves into the lead spot by a point over Snowballin, who still has two. Hillary Luther with one is in third, everybody else without points. Their tiebreaker will be set by their finishing order if they are not able to find any. Leaders will be getting two to go. Julie's just trying to pull away from this group of three behind her now. She says, I may not be able to sprint against you, but try to keep up with this tempo. Good luck. There's her first point. If they don't catch Julie, it's Jenna Lingwood's race because she has three points and no one else can beat that. If uh, Julie gets one more, she only have two. But if they, uh, well, correction, actually, if Julie gets the next two, she would be the winner by a tie break with Jenna. So we'll see if that's how it plays out. In fact, Jenna's kind of backpedaling a bit and says, I, I don't think I need to race against her. So once again, Julie establishing the kind of endurance she has, waiting until the back half of the race, and she just goes. Can't stop this one. One to go. Julie picks up another point. Now it's Luther and Snowblin starting to pursue. Lingwood will answer the call here and try to keep up with it. But we're watching Julie Peterson doing what she does best, this solo effort. Julie Peterson will be your overall winner in this race with three points breaking the tie with Lingwood. Lingwood racing most in front of the pointing position is really concerned about where Snowblin is. So in the elites, it'll be Lingwood in the lead for this race. And the tiebreaker sprint here. Riders without points are placed based on where they finish. So Gilchrist makes a nice move to come up to the front number 22. Will be your next finisher in the finishing order based on how she sprinted there. Pause for the uh, call and order here. All right, in order, your leader right now in the International Omnium points with 15, John Bowie. In second with 14, Dave Richter. In third with 13, Sam Frigo. In fourth with 12, Eric Deertens. In fifth with 11, Chris Wilson. Bart LeMay Sonic with 10. Brendan Russell with nine. Mike Dahlin, nine. Norman Richard, eight. Carl Hofer with seven. David Magidson with seven. Vern Cole with six. I believe that's all of our starters. All right, this group going out for the same race as we just saw a moment ago with the uh, tempo that we just concluded. Three laps until they hear a bell. After four laps have concluded, that four, first rider on that fourth finished lap will get one point, and every lap after that, the first rider across the line gets a point until the end. On deck, we have Kieran's 
coming up. We're gonna go for our Elite and Masters women, Kieran Finals first. That is coming up after this tempo race is completed. There's a 15 lap event this time, so just a little bit longer, still the same distance in the front before the points start getting handed out. And the whistle sounded for racing to resume for these riders in the International Omnium. Basically a four part competition. This is the second phase of the International Omnium, the tempo. If you're just tuning in from online or maybe strolling in the park, hearing something's going on at the velodrome, this is Fred's race. We don't usually race on a Saturday, but for some of our special events, we're here on the weekend too. This is a continuation of the regional track cycling championships held here annually at the velodrome. Name Fred's race in memory of Fred C. Rayberger, local cyclist and friend to many who would encourage everyone to come out and race and compete and get on their bikes. A real positive energy in our community and we try to remember that sort of positivity when we run this event. We try to invite as many people out for meddling and for being celebrated and supported no matter which type of race they want to be, what age they're looking to compete in. You know, that's all good here at Fred's race. We've got a place for them to compete and show up this weekend. This is our third session of four. We've got one more session tomorrow morning. The Saturday, Sunday morning session features the team pursuit, team sprints going on as well as the sprint tournament. So sprinters will show up in the morning to set their 200 meter times. And then we've got some teams doing first, I believe the team sprints followed by the pursuits. And then we'll continue on with a match sprint tournament throughout the uh, late morning into the afternoon. And that'll be the end of Fred's race 2022. Currently on track, a couple laps in, our elite men and junior 17, 18-year-old men combined group racing in an Omnium today. The International Omnium riders earn points for their finishes that will help them with their points race later. Next time around, first rider gets a point. Next time around, first rider gets a point. Brennan Russell finds his way to the front on this first lap and lots of energy from the front half of this group now as five accelerating big time onto the home straight. Russell looks like he's on pace for the first point. Number six, your leader on the first sprint. Here comes Sam Frigo, number 37, for a point. Two riders with one each. Number six and number 37. I mean, now John Bowie says, I haven't got my point yet. Maybe I can start rolling. Richter sensing that Bowie wants to keep racing, wants to try to respond. And here he comes. Actually, not even wanting to get to the wheel. Just take the lead away. Get this point right now. Here comes Richter. Rock and roll in a pretty big effort on the back straight all the way around to the front and finds his first point. Three riders now with the point apiece. Number seven, number six, and number 37. Number seven, Richter off the front and he's gonna go for it. This might be him trying to put the nail in the coffin in this thing really early. He just has to be out here for a few laps to win it really. We'll see how this one plays out with Bowie quite a bit off of his place right now. Just now coming under turn three is the rider from Liquid Velo. Richter looks around to see that he still has plenty of running room. He'll be on his second point now, number seven. Bowie looking for reinforcements, gets above the blue line and waits for the rest of the field to join him. Richter strutting his stuff here. Getting points out the front of the field and no one's even close. Another point for Dave Richter. Bringing him up to what should be now three points. It's Brandon Russell and Sam Frigo, both of the point. In second. 
Everybody else looking for points. It'll come down to the tiebreaker at this rate as Richter is not getting caught anytime soon. His fourth point off the front now. Eric Deerton's number 45, making a big effort to try to close down the gap a little bit, encourage these riders to do some more work as number 41 responds in kind. John Bowie, who was looking for those reinforcements earlier, is happy to join in on the effort as well as he's willing to do the work, just needed some help. Here comes the leader. Five to go and another point. As is reminded, thanks to the way the tempo works, really, I think Richter could just do one more, and there's no way anybody can beat him as anybody else has only got one point. And with only four laps remaining at this point, he, especially with this point, he's absolutely secured the victory. We'll see how he plays the rest of this race. One more point for Richter at four to go, and you can already see the tempo starting to kind of ease up a little bit. He's done what he needs to do technically to win the tempo outright. So he'll just kind of let things slide at this point, roll back on the tempo a little bit, release that energy and that pressure. He's been building up for so many laps, that nice consistency. As he will give somebody else a chance now to compete for some points. Eric Deerton is looking for an opportunity, number 45, to move now into that tie for second place with one point. All you need is two to be in second place. So three to go, Deerton's on the attack. Bowie's trying to cover this distance quickly as 45's gotten a little bit of room on him. Be Bowie now trying to find his first point. Richard Norman on his wheel. Still Bowie at the front. Bowie joins the many with one. Two of these riders at the front, both with one point. Is number three, the rider in black and green. And Deerton's the rider in red. Right at the front position, number 41, without a single point yet. Whoever can double up will be suddenly in second place. It might be Bowie here making the move to try to get two the bell ringing one more point for buoy would put him into second place on this final lap one to go the bell ringing for the rest of the field as well ties will be broken with riders that don't have any points here so position still important for the omnium and the sprint for the finish. One last point to go out as Bowie and Deertons going head to head. Bowie and Deertons. It'll be Eric Deertons around the outside to pick up a point. I think those two will actually end up in a tie. The tie break should go in Deertons' favor. So the rider in red gets second, the rider in black and green in third. We saw earlier Richter pick up the victory with so many points off the front. The rest of these riders without points are getting sorted in order as they come across. So that will, of course, impact the places for the Omnium and the points that they carry forward. Number seven, though, your winner for the tempo today in this race to the International Omnium finish. Of course, that big points race at the end is the real victory that the riders are looking for. Kieran's coming up next. We got the Elite and Masters Women group on deck and ready to start. So this is Hillary Luther, Diane Snowball, and Jenna Lingwood, and Amara Edwards, I believe, would be the four.
Oh, the signal being given for the pacer. Time to roll. Here we go. Kieran's our short race, four laps around the track. Two and a half of them behind the pacer bike. We got that red bike on the back straight getting started up. They'll be setting the tempo for this group and bringing them up to speed and dropping them off for a lap and a half at the end of the race. Riders, the pacer is coming onto the home straight. Riders ready. Off we go. Number nine draws lane number one, so she's compelled to come up to the front, and everybody else slots in the order that they were placed on the track. So position number one, Hillary Luther. Number nine in the blue. Number 220 in the white, Diane Snowblin. Third in the lineup, Jenna Lingwood, number 13. And for the Greg Cycles Trek team, number four, Amara Edwards. On deck, the junior women Kieran finals, followed by the junior men Kieran finals. Three to go. We'll be seeing two to go now on the home straight. They'll drop the pacer on the back half of the track this time. The two in the middle have been duking it out this weekend, so we'll see how they race in the Kieran. In pure power and speed, it might be 220 with a little bit of an advantage here, but I know Jenna's got lots of speed to throw at it as well. In fact, already starting to kind of consider maybe positioning may be my tactic. Jenna's starting to reposition Hurley. So up to along the side of Hillary now as Jenna takes the front spot. Amar trying to fall on the wheel. Big shift in position before we get to the bell. Langwood wants to get to the front. Jenna on the front of this race, gonna try to go all out for the 400 meters. Edwards in the second spot now, trying to keep up to speed with Lingwood. Snowblin starting to line things up from downtown in turn two. Can she get up there in time? Lingwood still at the front, but Snowblin, this is the power I'm talking about. This rider in white's got a lot of it. She's just gonna make a big run at it. Snowblin, so powerful here around the corner. Diane Snowblin, our British Columbia rider, takes the Kieran in great style. Good speed from rider 220. Our junior women now coming up for their Kieran. Down in lane number one, wearing bib 22 is Lucy Gilchrist. Number 205 next door to her is Leah Hulslander. Bib number 10, Danny Scoville. And 202 on the outside with that blue helmet is Bella Meha. The four riders in our Kieran final for the junior women. On deck, junior men for their Kieran. Pacers getting the signal to roll. Same race format, four laps on the track, two and a half with the lead bike. Young women competitors here. It's 22, compelled to take that front spot. She's working her way up there now. Again, there's Leah Holslander in lane two, so she's the second rider. Scoville third, and the fourth rider in the lineup is Bella. Just this. 
three to go. And uh, our young competitors here getting set to start the fun Kieran finish for these four riders. I would, again, it's usually in a race of this format, really top speed is the, the main key. The rider in that orange helmet would be my pick from the field to win this one as Danny's got great top speed. Lucy at the front of this field is going to try and figure out a way to best her in this one as both Leah and Bella also in interesting that they are kind of every other rider. They're going to be following the wheels of these riders as they get up to speed. Let's see how they play it out as on the back half of this lap, the pacer will take their exit. You also tell the 13, 14 year olds there's a difference <laughs> even of a year between some of these riders and their stature on the bike. Lucy getting as arrow she can as the pacer pulls out of the way. She stays at the front, number 22, on the lead of this group. And uh, the orange helmet starting to move into position now. With the bell ringing, it's one to go. And Lucy looks to the right to see who's there. She will barely see the frame of number 10 coming into view as she stays in that position just off and behind, leaving herself a little, plenty of room to move her later in this race, but nobody's up to speed yet. A lot of hesitation from Gilcrest. Doesn't want to drive it too hard too soon. And it'll be Bella to make the move first, which forces the other two riders to get up and out of the saddle. Hull Slander and Bella sprinting out of the back, and here comes Scoville with her big acceleration around the side. Scoville in the orange helmet with that top speed, doing a nice job to the line. Number 10 will grab this one in a good race for the junior women. Eight riders in the list here for the junior men for the Kieran. Let's see junior men for your Kieran final. Come on up. Big start list here. We've got eight riders signed up. Time to get to the line. At least one scratch that I see here. Maybe two. In lane one is Merrick Gallagher. In lane two, Monmeet Ranu. In lane three, Henry Armstrong. In lane four, JC Pyle. In lane five, Parker Stanford. I believe lane six is a scratch. Lane seven, Logan Lee. Lane eight, David Magidson. So Maggotson also a scratch for the race. All right, just about ready to get started here for our junior men and their quick four laps around the track. Signal again given for the pacer. Off goes Carl. Once again, Merrick Gallagher was the rider called in lane one, so he's at the very front of the lineup. Mon Meet Renu on his wheel. Henry Armstrong, the third rider in this group. And Parker Stanford, the fourth. Three to go. Four riders all here for the Jerry Baker Juniors team. Apparently Red Helmets is also the theme. Parker Stanford missed out on that one.
our local junior racing team. With Merrick Gallagher is the first rider. He's about almost about a lap away before it'll be his race to lead. And we're all still in the lineup behind him as we started the race. Two to go. Gallagher staying on his bases with Monmeet right behind him. Everybody's still in single file line and no change of the position as we round the corner. Bell's ringing, it's one to go. On deck, the elite men for their Kieran finals are coming up in just a moment. Still Gallagher on the lead of the lap. Monmeet's starting to pick up some pace, trying to find a way around him. May have left the lane just a bit early, but he'll try to make the move nonetheless. Good acceleration for Monmi Ranu, who's now side by side with Gallagher. He needs the staying power, though. He's got a lot of track space still to cover. It's Monmi side by side with Gallagher. Ooh. Gallagher will hold on in the shorter lane by not much. A nice race there for the two of those riders, Henry and Parker, also bringing up some great speed behind them. Yeah, I might have seen if different outcome with Monmi at the sprinter's lane just a little bit longer on the front end of that one. That's a tough one. Here come the elite man for their Kieran final. Signals given for the pacer to go. It's all those darn tents in the way. Just trying to seek some respite from that really strong sun we got going on right now. <laughs> Off we go. Number 12, coefficient of speed, Andrew Carlberg takes the lead spot. It's Guy McClintock, the Flying Gorilla Academy, with one of the more interesting and colorful names at the velodrome for a team. That's the rider in second position. Two riders from the ground cycling squad make up the other two riders in this group. Number six is Brandon Russell and number 24, is Super Mario Sandoval. He's gonna have to ride it from the front, but Andrew Carlberg certainly a favorite in a Kieran. Can't, uh, can't forget to mention that he is very recently, we're still kind of getting used to saying that he's got the track record for the Flying 200 now, as that record stood for quite a, quite a while here. But uh, Andrew Carlberg this last, well, I say two weeks ago now. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Two weeks ago, July 4th racing broke the record uh, for the Flying 200. So in that case, certainly would just buy the books. Number 12 is certainly a favorite. But I see plenty of other speedsters out here tonight. Guy McClintock, a name I've call, seen here before, and it's been a while since I've watched him race here at the track. Definitely another rider with great top speed is number 46. And both the found cycling riders also dangerous in their own right. 24, I think more of a sprinter out of the field, but that's much what the Kieran is. You know, this is kind of a sprinter's race for riders that like to be already at top speed rather than riders that, I mean, maybe in the match sprint that may look for more of that from zero to 100 sort of move. And Andrew's trying to hold off a little bit longer here. Doesn't want to start things too early. Carlberg defending, looking over the shoulder, keeping as long as he can. Now the move coming from Super Mario alongside. Mario doesn't have the lane yet. It's going to be Carlberg defending it. He held off on the charge as long as he could, and now he's just going to be compelled to go all the way on the track for 400 meters. 
Now a second effort from Carlberg at the front of the field. It's three riders behind him trying to get up to him. Brandon Russell's trying to find some way to get there. It's not going to happen. Carlberg all the way around for 400 meters. The coefficient of speed cannot be touched. Number 12 goes across the line first, defending his title as the top speed champion right now here at the track. All right, riders will exit on the back straight if they're able to find the room. Looks like the warm circle is clear, and uh, we are ready to go into what looks to be Masters Podiums. Next race will be the third race in the Omnium for the elite women and junior 17, 17-year-old women. Until then, we were doing Masters Podiums, so give me just a moment to be ready. Please have positive thoughts for me. <laughs> One sec as we get ready for some podiums. These podiums are just for Masters competitors, so uh, we're gonna go starting with the Masters Madison, which I believe I'm calling up three gold medals teams here. Yeah, that's right. First up for the 35 through 39 category. I don't think either of them are still here, but our champions were Andy Baker and Maddie Herds. Oh, Maddie's here. Maddie, come on up for your teammate. Fantastic. Why don't we just get all of them up on the podium? Yeah, we get them all up there. Next up for the 50 to 54 is uh, the team of Matt Haldeman and Bobby Walther, your champions. <laughs> and the 55 to 59 category, your champions in the Masters Madison was Eric Waterman and Vern Cole. Let's get them all up on the podium together. Ready, set, go. All right, who did that? It was Maddie. Okay, got it. Yeah, of course it was Maddie. It can't be Andy. He's not even over there. Don't blame Andy. <laughs> Carlberg, you're not Andy. Uh, okay, got it. Fantastic. All right, let me get the uh, scratch race up coming next.
This is the uh, Masters Men 35 through 54 scratch race. Uh, we will begin with 35 through 39, which I think I got a champion to call, and that is it. Your gold medalist for the 35 through 39 category, James Campbell Harris. Oh, Mike Ricker. I'm sorry, Mike. I messed it. It's come up here and look how bad this thing looks. It's not my fault. Mike Ritter in the silver medal. Nicely done. Okay. I promise I won't mess up any more times, except I will. 40 through 44 category. I hope I got this right. Your champion is Maddie Hers. Also the winner of the race. <laughs> Lay him alone, Haldy. 50 through 54. In silver is Matt Haldeman. And your champion, Mike Dahlin. All right, for the 60 plus, let's call up uh, Jonathan for the gold medal, please. Jonathan Leons, congratulations. All right, in the 55 to 59, in the silver medal, Vern Cole. And your champion, Eric Waterman. I guess it's the same as my call. Yes. Oh, okay. Hold on. Can you two get back up there one more time? Bobby Walther, get up there for the bronze medal. We just got a last minute call. Bobby, where are you at? Come on over for a bronze medal. Next race coming up to the rail here in just a moment. We are finished with podiums. We are going to move on to this elimination for the women competitors in the International Omnium. Give me a moment to be ready for the call-ups, and we're also putting down the podiums banner for now. So we're ready to get this race started in just a minute. I would announce these, but unfortunately my score sheet doesn't is not updating, so we'll have the officials bring our riders up in order.
So the riders, as they come to line, this is their order so far in the International Omnium. So riders at the front are higher up in the points. Riders towards the back are trailing in the points. Upcoming is the elimination for the women. Neutral lap going. Starting out turn four if they're together. Last ride across the line. Once the race has started, they'll have to complete one lap and then that last rider is eliminated every lap until we're down to just the final two and they're in a head-to-head -head matchup. This, of course, the third race in the International Omnium. Riders continue to earn points for their start in the last race in the International Omnium, the big points race to finish it off. Diane Snowblin, number 220, is your leader coming into this race. She's wearing white in fourth wheel spot right now in the group. And the whistle sounded and we can get this thing going. This is our third race for the women competing today in the International Omnium. Next time around, last rider gets eliminated. Next time around, last rider eliminated. Two thirteen is Melissa Jones eliminated. Jones. It's Hillary Luther all the way at the front, setting the pace right now for the field. And uh, looking at the back, I see black and red in the, the farthest back spot, but still plenty of track room to maneuver. Although let, looking like the pace might be dropping her a little bit here. If she goes low, she has easier route, but may not be able to make enough advance. So she goes high like she ought to, see if she can hold on this lap. Oh, might be down. Nope, it's gonna be a rider in black and red. 17 gets the call. Meg Mountner. Twenty-seven, Julie Peterson. Peterson caught at the bottom. Emily Alexander, number eight, has got the long trail to go here. She's in the very back of this lineup, single file. As Jenna Lingwood flies to the front line to reconfigure things a bit. Number eight, Alexander. Was making good ground or good he headway on it. Just didn't have quite enough time to make it. Her teammate down the sprinter's lane has a tough spot now. She's having to start a back up. Christine Diebler starting to back up on the line and see if she can get all the way around this long lineup. Nowhere to go down there. She makes it to the back and she's gonna make the jump here. So you see that movement up and out of the saddle as she had to navigate around that formation. Oh. <laughs> Number four, very disappointed in that moment. You could really hear it in her voice. Debo makes a great move, backs off, goes all the way around the big lineup and stays in. Now she's at the front of the race, so. Look at that. Great movement for the rider from the Liquid Villa team, 207. At the back of this group, now it's Alinda Lingwood. 
Hillary Luther, the next rider up, just trying to make sure she has enough to stay in. <laughs> 15 says, I don't have the turn of speed right now to get there. Shake of the head and 15 gets the call. Four riders left. Many of the riders that found their way to the front of this lineup in the call-ups as they are the riders with the most number of points. Snowblin and Lingwood, the two at the front. It's Hillary Luther also in a good spot in this competition and a good place in this race. diebler has got another tough spot as she finds herself at the back. Nice acceleration here. <laughs> 207 can't find it this time. A great race for a rider from Liquid Vela. We'll get called out this time. Hillary Luther, the third rider in this lineup now. She's rider number nine at the tail end of Jenna Lingwood and Diane Snowblin. Rider should be getting the bell this time. Oh, trying to drop somebody here. Lilithur's trying to make the move, see if he can get rid of one of these riders. She might have been able to actually come around Snowblin and take the sprinter's lane, but didn't quite make enough to make that move happen. So Snowblin's able to keep in the sprinter's lane and stay in this race. <laughs> Number nine's caught that time, and we got two riders left as to get the bell. It's Snowblin and Lingwood in a familiar matchup from this weekend. on the cure and the top speed that Snowblin has. That's a much shorter race than this. It has had a few more matches to burn to stay in this race. And Lingwood is very happy to be on the wheel right here to see if she can find a way to come around the outside of her. Just has to win from the front now. Can Snowblin hold on to this? Lingwood making a good run at it. Not enough time to get there. Good run at it. Just not enough time, not enough distance for 13. Snowblin, your winner in the elimination. 13 will go second. The elite men and junior 17, 18 year old men for their third race, the elimination. I can call this one if you give me a moment to call you up to the line. All right, here comes our elimination for the men in the International Omnium. You have a neutral lap, you'll come across the line. After one fully completed race lap in the race, you'll have the eliminations begin. So after one full lap in the race, Eliminations begin, and this again, our third race in the International Omnium for the men today. Number seven works his way up to the front of the formation, as number seven is Dave Richter for the Found Cycling Guild, leading things out right now in this neutral, already basically part of the race is the neutral lap for the elimination, is always so fast. There is that whistle, racing's underway. He's got Bowie right alongside of him, number three. That's the front of our race. Next time around, first elimination. Next time around, our first elimination. One rider early off the back. One rider off the back early volunteer. Yeah, thumbs up. I guess he likes being the volunteer. 332. Number 41, Norman Richard.
Number 20, Vern Cole. Vern Cole. Still working our way down to the top positions. It's Bowie that's now found himself in the lead of the race, setting the front edge of this formation. Bartholomé Sanak, number 43, has got the back position and will have to make the big move to try to come around the top. Looks like he'll be able to do so. Leaving 45 as the man out here. Eric Deerton's caught that time. Placed well in our tempo. Got pinched out here at about the halfway point in the elimination. And still Sonic, the big rider in black at the back of the field, who's got to have this last minute effort to come around the top. He's already starting to do so. Will he have enough this time to catch somebody? He does, number 27. Chris Wilson already seems to be aware. Sonic in the same position again. This time he goes a bit earlier. It's gonna be a bigger sprint this time. Oh, Sonic's gotta get back on the wheel again and try for another effort. The rider in black has been back here for a couple laps. Does he have one more? Ooh, this one might be it. We'll see. Nice run at it. Oh, it's going to be five across the track. Number seven, it's Richter gets the call. Richter. Man, I was not sure how that was going to end. All the way across the track. And uh, Sonic's doing a brilliant job here of playing this devil's role at the back of the field. Just keeps accelerating enough to stay in the race. He's got to do it again. He's on the wheel of Brendan Russell right now, trying to fan out. It's a four across sprint. Everybody's going to be paid. Oh, looks like maybe not having enough this time. All right. 43 gets called out, but he's done his, uh, he's done some damage here in the elimination. Three left. Playing that role at the back is kind of the on off sort of approach to the athleticism. You sprint and rest, sprint and rest. Worked pretty well there. We've got John Bowie, number three down the sprinter's lane, Brandon Russell alongside him, number six, and Sam Frigo in the tight spot, trying to find room in the middle. Is that where he's gonna go? He's trying. Whoa, geez. <laughs> 37, 37. Bowie, I thought was gonna get caught there and he noticed Sam coming in had just enough. Oh, Bowie's away a little bit. Can Brandon get back up to him? He left a little bit of room trying to get up and around Sam Frigo as he's getting eliminated. I think Bowie's got this one locked in as he's got too much distance already. It'll be Bowie winning the elimination, picking up the big points here. And Brennan Russell comes across the line as your second place finisher in this one. Nice job to both of our riders for their great finishes today, as well as Sam Frigo, a top three finisher. All right, we're gonna do some podiums for the Kirins. Once again, pause for a moment as I prepare to not make a Tom complete foolery of this here. One second. We'll do the elite women first for the Kieran finals. To the podium, please, the elite women first.
Your top three finishers today for the elite women on the Kieran today. Right for Point S. Nokian in the bronze medal, Jenna Lingwood. Your silver medalist, Hillary Luther. What? Yes. And in the gold medal for the Burnaby Belgium Club, Diane Snowblin. Junior women, Kieran Finals. And the bronze medal, Bella Meha. The silver medalist, Lucy Gilchrist. And your champion in the gold medal today, Danny Scoville. Junior men for the Kieran final, junior men. The bronze medalist is Parker Stanford. <laughs> In the silver medal, Monmeet Ranu. Monmeet Ranu. And the gold medalist. Oh, there they come. All right, here we go. Come on, you three. And the gold medalist will be Ger Merrick Gallagher, your top three for the junior men, Kieran. And congratulations to our junior men who don't know how to put their hands up in the air at the same time. All right. And the elite men here in final, your top three. Bronze medalist is Mario Sandoval. Yo, Brando, get up. It's a Kieran. <laughs> in the silver medal, it's Brandon Russell. And gold medalist, your champion for the elite bands, Kieran Final, Andrew Carlberg. Congratulations to all of our Kieran competitors. That is the conclusion of our presentations here for the podiums. I can call the points this time. I'm ready. Yeah, I got this. I'm so set to go. Paper, man. It's Sometimes it's the solution. The elite women coming back up for the final race. It's the points race in the International Omnium. Calling you in order to the rail as your points stand coming into the race. Your leader with 43 points, Diane Snowblin. In second with 40, Jenna Lingwood. In third with 39, Hillary Luther. In fourth with 36, Julie Peterson. In fifth with 30, Christine Diebler. After that, Amara Edwards, 26. Belinda Lingwood, 24. Meg Mountner, 24. Melissa Jones, 22. And Emily Alexander, 19. All competitors to the rail, please.
standard points race, except riders come into it with a certain points total already earned. As it was announced as they came to the rail, you already heard how many points these riders are starting with. And now we're just adding to that as we go. So I'll do my best to kind of keep track of it over here and add their current points to the points they started with and kind of keep us up to date on the overall competition. It all really comes down to this. We will not podium for their place in any of the previous races. It all is here in this points race where we sort things out. Your leader in the white at the front of this neutral lap. Number 220, Diane Snowblin is the rider with the most number of points. She comes in already with 43. It's 15 to win a race, so you know how well she's done in the previous three events. As the most you can come into this would be 45. All right, and the racing underway. There's the whistle in our final race in the International Omnium. Good luck to all of our competitors. Let's have a nice points race to close out this great evening of racing. First bell at 21 to go. First bell will be at 21 to go, seeing 24 on the lap cards. Riders get five, three, two, and one on the lead of the lap if on those point sprints, which again, this will be a five by five format, which means there's five sprints every five laps for a total of 25 laps. So first opportunity at 20 to go, bell at 21. Just like a standard points race, even though this one's for the International Omni, but still double points on the final sprint, 10, six, four, and two to close it out. That's Meg Mountner for the Bright Op Racing team pulling up out of the way. Behind her was uh, Julie Peterson quickly moving up track. And Diane Snowblin as well moving up. Your leader in the overall race with the uh, second place rider right on a wheel. That's Jenna Lingwood that's going to keep a close eye on her. Oh, a big move here from Edwards trying to take advantage of the two race leaders watching each other. So Edward's mixing it up here well ahead of the bell, just trying to get things started. Pulls up and out of the way as soon as she gets someone to bite. 22 to go. Bell's ringing for points on this first attempt here to add to the totals. Number 13, your rider overall in second place coming into this for the Omnium at the front of the field. Julie Peterson is in fourth overall. That's the rider on her right that's flanking Lingwood now at the front of the big lineup. Lingwood's holding on on top speed at this point. You can see she's guarding the sprinter's lane and just waiting as long as she can before needing to apply any speed. Really keeping her eye looking for a white jersey as that's the one she's trying to beat. And she sees the move, so she'll try to cover this attack from Diane Snowblin. Try to find the five. It's Snowblin riding high. It'll be Lingwood doing what she needs to go to get the five. Snowblin finds three. Hillary Luther for two. And Peterson will find one. So your top four riders all get the points. Except L Jenna Lingwood, currently in second, gets first on that sprint. So she gets two points closer to taking over the lead. All right, your race leader is in the International Omnium. Diane Snowblin moves up 
to 46 points, only one point ahead of Jenna Lingwood with 45. Next rider is Hillary Luther now with 41. Julie Peterson with 37. Everyone else has the points they started with, so the next closest rider would be number uh, 207, D Diebler, with 30 points. My number is matching the official record so far, so we'll see how this next points sprint plays out. A lot of up and down movement here, a lot of changing of the lead. Attacks followed by a reset now as uh, riders kind of fan out and take up more of the track space and wait for the next opportunity. Your leader, number 220, all the way up along the rail, watching the field move underneath her. Number eight moves to the front. That's Emily Alexander for Liquid Velo. Alexander leading out as the bell's ringing for points next time around. Alexander at the lead. Up and out of the saddle, trying to hold on to this thing as long as she can. The field not charging too quick yet. She's got some room. Next rider, Amara Edwards, number four. Trying to put in a pretty big dig here. Comes Lingwood at another speed entirely. Really timing her jump. She's all about trying to beat Snowblin. Really racing this smart so far, too. Well-placed and well-timed moves from 13 gives her another five. 220 gets three. Hilly Luther with two, and there's Julie Pierce again for one. It's the same order as the first sprint. That should give Ling with the new lead by a point. I got her at 50 with uh, Snowblind out 49 in second. Hilly Luther moves up to having 44 points and Julie Peterson now is 38. Everyone else starting with, or uh, every other rider, excuse me, has the same number of points as they started with. Your front four are the points getters in the last sprint. And it seems like the numbers match up with the official record. That's Julie Peterson at the very front of the race right now. Hilary Luther, the rider in blue, is in third overall. Julie, the rider in front, is in fourth overall now in the race. After the sprint for points, they were well ahead of the, some of the riders behind them. But this hesitation allowing some of them maybe get back in. Ooh, Lingwin's trying to apply some endurance here. You all want to rest? Let's go. Let's see what I can do with this. So Jenna putting on a move at 13 to go. It's a good lap for number 13 to make the attack. This is making Snowblin spend some big effort here. Lingwood willing to pull up as soon as her direct competition catches back on. Not wanting to do any more than that. Luther, the rider in third overall, coming back up onto the rail up behind Lingwood. These, these riders really know it's not a big enough field to ride it like a field. They are riding it sort of like a mixed match sprint format at this point. As long as it's just these riders at the front, they can do these kinds of tactics where they move up and down track. They're not too threatened except by each other. So that's what they're gonna, how they're gonna ride this thing. Alinda Lingwood bringing him back up a few more riders underneath the leaders. And carrying forward as number 15 carries some more momentum. 207, the rider in black and green. Comes to the front now. That's Christine Diebler. She's in fifth place overall. 
Gets the bell at 11 to go. Bringing him back into a nice sized field here as the lead group of four lets three riders catch. We've got seven combining together. Diebler still on the lead of the lap. The leaders of the race are in the back of this field. The sprint coming from Snowblin now, as it looks like Hillary Luther and Jenna Lingwood not able to match this speed this time. So the rider in white's put together a nice one here. Five points for her, three for Lingwood, two for Luther, and one for Peterson. A very familiar finish order, but the leaders have swapped places again. Fun to watch these two go back and forth as Snowblin and Lingwood are trading blows, quite literally. Snowblin now back in the lead by a single point. Lingwood trailing by one now. 54 points for Snowblin unofficially, 53 for Lingwood. Give 46 points to Hillary Luther and I got Julie Peterson at 39. Everyone else should be the same. Very good. That matches what our officials show. Four riders off the front. Once again, those are our riders that keep getting the points. You can see why they are a strong bunch. Julie Peterson on the lead of the group now. They saw eight to go. And like once again, this field of four watching each other allows the three behind them to come back in. They haven't factored into these point sprints yet, but they do join back in on the field. Christine Diebler making a move from the front now, 207. A rider overall in fifth place in the International Omnium. So far, fifth and below hasn't found a way to be in the points during the points race. The Diebler's trying something out new here. She finds herself being followed by the other top four riders. And now the bell's ringing as Diebler's trying to configure herself somehow up to the front of this race. Snowblin is on her wheel as Diebler pulls up. It's now Snowblin at the lead. The rider in the third spot right now in the lineup, Lingwood, overall in second, took the first two point sprints, trying to find another way to get another. She thinks she can catch Diane Snowblin this time, so she'll try to launch one down the back straight. Here goes Jenna Lingwood again. Diane Snowblin wants to fight, though. Luther and Peterson lined up in a similar order. Here comes Lingwood and Snowblin. Snowblin making the big run at it. Lingwood, Snowblin, Snowblin's got this one. Lingwood for three, Luther for two, and Peterson for one. Unofficially your race leader, Snowblin now with 59. Pulls a bit further ahead of Lingwood at 56. Luther with 48, and Peterson with 40. Last race for the International Omnium for the men is coming up in just four short laps. Well, they're the longest laps in track racing, but besides that. <laughs> four to go for the International Omnium for the women. Your race leader up at the race, or at the uh, rail again, I should say, at the front of this group.
Correction for Hillary Luther's uh, points totals. It's 47 for Luther, not 48. All riders back together again into our field now. So all racers in the same spot right here on the home straight at two to go. A good way for this race to conclude today. Two to go. Diane Snowblin, 2-2-0, trying to finish this thing out. If she can get the 10, it's easily hers. If Lingwood finds the 10 points, though, it's Jenna Lingwood's race. So it really does count down to the final sprint. Edwards makes her way back in and says, I'm going to go again. She's tired of the sitting around. Anytime they're up high, she goes. Julie Peterson gonna make the move now around the outside. Oh, here we go. This is it. There's your four riders. They're lining it up. One last chance. It's one to go. Last lap. Peterson on the lead. Snowblin, Lingwood, Luther. Okay, it all comes down to this. It's still possible for 13 to win. If she can find her way around Snowblin in the final sprint, she's got her wheel. So the position advantage goes to Lingwood, but Snowblin so strong from this position. Might be a bit too much. Lingwood's still making a run at it, so it could be close. Ooh, can she get there? Snowblin on the front. Lingwood's trying to find it. It will be Snowblin for the win. And a great race for the women today in the International Omnium. Congratulations to all. Snowblin, Lingwood, Luther, and Peterson will be your top four in this overall race. 207, I believe, will be fifth. Congrats to all for making it here to this point and sticking out for the International Army. That was a great race to watch. We've got the men coming up in just a moment. I will call you up with your points totals. All right, elite men. And the junior, I guess there's no juniors left in this group, is there? The elite men for the International Omnium. Oh, is there one? All right, coming up first with 43 points, John Bowie. In second with 40, Dave Richter. In third with 38, Sam Frigo. In fourth with 35, Eric Deertens. After that, 34 to Brandon Russell. 30, Chris Wilson. 30, Bartolome Sanak. 26, Norman Richard. 21, Vern Cole. 21, David Magidson. There he is. Yeah, David. The junior's still here. All right, we've got the last race here of the evening. 35 laps on the cards for a points race for the International Omnium, elite men and junior men. Off they go for their neutral. We'll start about turn four for this last race of the night. It's a points race. Riders start with what they've earned from the previous rides. Very similar uh, points here from what we saw in the women's field as uh, our leaders got 43 and it's 15 to win the race. So John Bowie has been doing well here overall coming into this one. That's number three for Liquid Velo with the best start coming into the race. Dave Richter has got 40 points. I think his worst finish was the elimination. Winning both in the scratch and the tempo. The placing, I believe, sixth place in the uh, elimination puts him at 40 points. Sam Free go up there, number 40, or with 38 points. He's number 37 in the field. All right, here we go. Elite men plus David Magnuson for their 35 laps. If you know who to cheer for, just give David some help. He's uh, the lone junior in the field. He's number 332, riding for the Jerry Baker Juniors today. What a great experience for this young rider, and kudos to him for sticking out this evening and being a competitor in this field.
Thanks for tuning in on the stream. If you're still here, I see a lot of you still watching here this evening. Racing's been a little bit slower today. We've had a few incidences that kind of took the wind out of our sails, and it's never fun to watch some of your riders hit the uh, hit the track in that way. But we have continued on nonetheless. Appreciate the riders that have stuck it out. We know it's tough to come back from moments like that. If you're still out there enjoying the stream and want to support our riders today, don't forget you can leave shout outs. Like I see Mary shouting out uh, that close nail biter there at the end of the last race. That was a good one to watch right up to the end. You can come on to the YouTube stream and leave a comment or a shout out. Leave a thumbs up on the video and a subscribe would really help us out as we continue to build this channel and what it serves for our community and the community at large that supports Velodrome Racers. This is Chris Wilson off the front with Sam Frigo, two riders that have popped away from the group. The rider in black or blue, <laughs> excuse me, in second wheel spot is Sam Frigo moves up behind Chris Wilson, who comes up the track a bit, rider from Fount Cycling. They're going to let the field catch back on here at this point. No bell this lap. We've got one more lap until the points start coming. 32 to go. Brennan Russell ready to shake and bake it down the back straight. Oh, thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Hey, the bell's ringing again. We got 31 to go. Points next time. Hey, there's the junior. Magnuson on the front, 332. <laughs> yeah. He's got no, he doesn't know how to quit. Here goes the rocket starting to pick things up. That that gets the attention of a few other riders as Bowie tries to come out of the lane. Eric Deertens is leading this thing out, the rider in black and red. Richter at the lead spot. He's got plenty of room here trying to secure the first five. Richter five, Bowie three, Richard Norman two, and Deertens one. Forty-five to Richter is the uh, puts him now in second place, but only trailing Bowie by one. Who's got 46 now? So Bowie 46, Richter 45, Frigo 38, Deertens 36. After that's going to be Russell Wilson, Sanak, and then uh, Norman Richard. Norman picked up two, so he's now got 28. Chris Wilson making the move here. Oh, David was thinking about going for it, and he even had some fans. Doesn't make the jump. Here comes Chris Wilson, though. This could be big big news for the field. Chris Wilson. All right. 27. On the move. Nice. This could be good for uh, the Found Cycling Guild rider. This is a great move for him, and the field's not really responding yet. Wilson comes into this race down 13 points from the leader at the start of it. He's now 16 points off the lead. Always easy to cheer for the solo effort, folks. Number 27. He's merely, he's really picked up some good distance here as our field just now hitting the home straight, coming across the line, starting to get some speed again. Now he's swinging high. This is giving a great opportunity for this leader, Chris Wilson, just to fly high and get away from this group. <laughs> I chuckle because the beverage garden is clearly on David Magnuson's side. He gets another move going. Here's the bell, six to go, Chris Wilson. Putting uh, Vern Cole into no man's land currently. The 27 is on the lead. Bell's ringing for the field. It's still three points. David Magnuson's driving this train. Here he goes. Number three is in position, ready to launch his attack. He's got another gear to go. Number seven trying to watch where Bowie is. Chris Wilson's still in the lead of this lap. He's got Vern Cole in his wheel, who will not be coming around for points. Is he not eligible? The sprint behind him, though, should be interesting. Here comes... Bowie and Rick, Richter side by side. Oh, whoa, Bowie, I think. Richter and then Frigo is the uh, unofficial order. Whoa. 
That was a heck of an effort. It is Bowie over Richter. They're now tied. 48 points apiece. Ooh. Frigo moves up to 39, still in third. Chris Wilson moves up to 35. Puts him in fifth place behind Deertons with 36 and fourth. Russell with 34, Sanek with 30, and Richard with 28. Good stuff. Sanak off the front here. Trying to get back up to Wilson, who's just not going to stop. This is how Chris Wilson races. And now uh, our rider in black trying to join in on the effort. Make it one rider stronger. 20 gets caught, so he can race again. So he's back in on this one. In fact, he's leading after getting caught. He's right back at it. Vern Cole, the, the warrior he is. So he leads the lap here for a moment. For the field, I should say. The lead of the lap is over here. The rider in black at the front of the race. Making another move. Uh, Chris Wilson is just not satisfied with the tempo of this field. Art Lemay Sanak from the Burnaby Velodrome Club joins in with the Van Cycling Rider to try to pick up some more points in this International Omnium conclusion. Your leaders in a tie back in the field, number three and number seven, as it looks like they're going to be watching each other closely, obviously. There's no reason they wouldn't be. Bowie is third in that lineup. Right behind him is Richter. Bell's ringing for our two leaders. Crossing the line. My mistake on the call. 49 points. My mistake. Bowie's got the lead by two, so a mistake on my part here. On Back to the finish here for some points. It looks like Wilson's not going to work together for points as they don't look to be competing and sprinting right now. Five to Wilson and three to Sunak. The sprint behind him, Bowie and Richter again at the front. Ooh, Bowie gets two. Sam Frigo for one. I think Richter's out of luck on that one. Whoa, Deerton's on this big boo is 45 and the black and red goes all the way up from the field to the leaders and he's gone. Wow. Great aggression here from some of these riders today that just want to show their stuff off the front. And Deerton's coming in big time right now for another solo move, Chris Wilson style. Your leader with 51 is John Bowie. Dave Richter still in second with 47 despite missing out on the points. Chris Wilson moves all the way up in a tie for third, I believe, with Sam Frigo at 40. After that, it's 36 to Deertons, 34 to Russell, 33 to Sanak. Deertons just tearing this place apart right now. And I don't see him slowing. It looks like he still has a great tempo right now. This is the look of a rider going to try to win this thing right now. At least try to get as many points as he can. See what he can do with it. 45. Very impressive riding here today. Here's our two now off the front of the lead, but still a front of the field. And here's the rest of our field as this is going to be kind of dictated by what John Bowie wants to have happen as he's the leader of the race, number three. Can the riders off the front beat him? By staying off the front, I think Deertons can. If he were to pick up the fives upcoming as well as the final 10, he would indeed pass anybody else in this race. 16 to go. Bell's ringing for points. Currently number 20, not eligible. So 27 and 43 are fighting over points, uh, the three and the two points. The field only has one point available, one point to the field. 
One point to the field next time. Someone can get, go pick that up. This is impressive. How about some help here for Deertons, who's still on a campaign to take this apart? Tearing this field down one lap at a time. Five points for Deertons. Yeah. Wilson for three, Sanat for two, and Richter coming out of the field. He knows he gets a point here. He'll find one. Bring him up to 48. 48 for Richter now. 48 for Richter. Trying to correct for my earlier miss call. Your leader is still Bowie with 51, unofficially. Richter in second with 48. Chris Wilson, Chris Wilson in third with 43. In fourth with 41 is Eric Deertons, and in fifth with 40 is Sam Frigo. My call unofficial. If riders tie for most points, the tiebreakers would come into effect. The most common one would be finishing position. So if any riders end up at this race in a complete tie, we will look at how they finished in the final sprint to break the tie, much like we would in a normal points race. It could happen here tonight. We'll have to keep track of how things are going. Thanks for the question on YouTube, Alex. Appreciate it. Chris Wilson is still trying to hold on to the lead spot ahead of the field. He's not in the lead of the lap, as that still goes to Deertons, who's still well ahead of the rest of the field, about a half a lap, as we see him coming up the home straight. Still on pace for another five at this rate. Eric with an incredible race here tonight. Again, if things work out for him, he might be the winner of this Omnium just based on this break. It really will come down to the next couple of laps to see if this field starts to get a little bit more energy behind them. Chris Wilson's still out here, just not wanting to take a rest. He knows where he needs to be to win a sprint. That's ahead of the sprinters. 12 to go. And another bell for number 45. Well, this is a good bit of humor. Thanks, Nolan, for checking in. Nolan says, why is there so many DNFs in this group? <laughs> I think it's actually DNSs, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I'll forgive him for not writing the right letter combination. Here comes the sprint for one point or two points out of the field as Richter's trying to get this thing started way at the line. We already know Deertons is on his way for five. Here he comes to pick up another five. Bring his total up to, I believe, to be 46. He's starting to knock on the door the lead of this race, folks. He might be the winner if he can keep this up. Chris Wilson gets three more. Persistent, 46 points for him. And it looks like Richard Norman for two and Richter for one. Deertons still on the go here at nine to go. Our leader is still Bowie with 51 and second is still Richter with 49. These calls unofficial. Two riders with 46. I have Deertons and Wilson in a tie for third. The riders off the front currently in a tie for third. Next closest rider I have is uh, Sam Frigo with 40 and Bartolome Sanak with 35. Seems to match what the officials have, too. All right, we're making some sense of it. Eight to go for Deertons. Whoa. So he gets one more of these. He's going to be at 51. That ties where Bowie is. That's even without the double points at the end. So even if he just stays out here, he's practically guaranteed the victory. Making it look easy. But, of course, this is an incredibly impressive solo effort by the rider in black and red. Chris Wilson being found finally by Bowie, who's starting to pick up the pace. The math is against number three, so he has to do a little bit of work. If he wants to stay in on this, he has to be willing to pull the field up towards this leader. Deertons, number seven, crossing the line. Number 45, I mean, at seven to go. <laughs> Whew. Well, okay, I guess that's right. Technically, he did start. Okay, I, don't, I guess I don't know how the International Omnium works, but I believe you. I figured that it would be a DNS for each individual event. I don't know. 
It is one long race, really, so. Bell's ringing again for number 45. He wants to take the lead of the race. If Bowie doesn't get points this time, Deertons is your new leader in a tie with Bowie. Bowie knows it, so here he goes. Liquid Bell is starting to pick up the pace. Number three is on the move. With 51 points, he needs to still work for this win tonight. Chasing him down, though, is number six, Brandon Russell. Not in direct competition for the International Omnium placings, but still wanting to work his way up it. Deertons for five more. 51 points to the solo break. Brandon Russell coming in for three. Bowie starting to back off the pace. Three for Russell. Two for Frigo. One for Richter. Fifty-one to two riders, Deertons and Bowie, your race leaders. Richter in second with fifty. Chris Wilson with forty-six. Sam Frigo with forty-two. I believe those are the top five. Oh boy. Okay, three to go. This is the win on the line for uh, Deertons here for the entire National Omnium coming right down to this huge break. Yeah, Richter, Bowie, and Deertons all within a point of each other at the end here. Magnuson with a big move. The junior wants his name called one more time. Do, go, David, go. He's off. Here we go, folks. Two to go. This is 20 laps of very impressive racing for this athlete here tonight. Saw the window of opportunity, just goes, goes, and goes. Never gave up. David Magnuson off the front of two to go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> how is he always smiling, no matter how hard it is? And 27, Chris Wilson trying to pursue. Deertons on his way for the victory. 10 more points coming his way in another lap. We already know it's going to happen. <laughs> He's got way too far of a lead. Magnuson off the front. He's still got lots of running room ahead of Chris Wilson. Last lap. Six points here up on the line between Wilson and Magnuson. Richard Norman, number 41, pursuing as well. Let's take a look at our winner over here taking the wave. It's Deertons, the winner of the International Omnium tonight with a fantastic solo break ride. Congratulations. And Madison's trying to hold on as Wilson comes, or Chris Wilson comes around the outside. Oh, six points for Chris Wilson, four for Magnuson, and two more for Bowie. Should give Bowie the uh, second overall finish, I believe. Although Chris Wilson was coming awfully close. I may have to wait for the points total updates. I think Wilson getting six more gives him 52. And Bowie getting two in that sprint gives him 53. That's how close that came down to. Deertons, though, I think will end the race at 61 points. The only one to break over 60 and will be our lone winner here in the International Omnium Bond. The points alone. What an evening that turned out to be. <laughs> yeah, I, I see you out there. Good point. That was uh, not kosher at our bell drum usually for that celebration. But, you know, sometimes these big, you know, it's look the other way. All right, with that, we have some podiums to do in a little bit. We'll keep the show rolling here. Thanks for everybody who's showing up to support our athletes. We are done with racing tonight. All we got left to do now is to celebrate and to uh, put some podiums out here. We got some medals to give out. We have one more session of racing for Fred's Race this weekend. It's Sunday racing tomorrow at 10. Team sprints, team pursuits, and of course, the match sprint tournament.
All coming up tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We will be streaming session four as well. So if you want to pick up the action again tomorrow and watch our racers from home, you may do so. Beverage Garden still open. Jessica's Unique Bites still hanging out for a little bit here this evening. If you want to grab something to eat on the way out for our in-person audience, thank you, everybody, for participating today, whether you're on this side of the rail or that side. You're an important part of making tonight so special for everybody here. Our hearts go out to those that were impacted today by a couple of incidences. We had some injury today. Hard to watch, but we're glad at least to see some of you already tuning back in to watch the action. That is a, that's a good sign. So thanks for doing that and dropping a line. Appreciate to hear from some of you out there. And, of course, in a few minutes, we'll be back with those podiums. I will uh, thank everybody for sticking around for racing and do the official sign-off. We'll be back for podiums in just a little bit. So thank you all again for tuning in. I look forward to hosting you for some more great racing tomorrow here at the Jerry Baker Memorial Velodrome. All right, I think uh, I can be ready to make these announcements pretty quick. If uh, I get the word that we're ready to present, I need a, I think we need a backdrop up before we can start. Thank you. We'll start with the elite women. I don't think we have a junior woman to present to. So our elite women will be up here in just a moment. Followed quickly by the elite men and the junior men as well, by the way. That one's still here. So, again, up first we'll do these elite women for the International Omnium. Quickly follow that with the elite men. About 30 seconds till we present. And to present now for the elite women in the International Omnium, your bronze medalist in third place, Hillary Luther. For the Point S Nokian team in second place, your silver medalist, Jenna Lingwood. And coming down from Burnaby Velodrome Club, your gold medalist, Diane Snobelin.
And now for the elite men and junior men. How about this? First, let's do our junior men elite or our junior men international omnium gold medal. Because I got one guy to throw it out to, and it's David Magidson. Come on up, David. And he didn't just show up. He raced today. That was fun. Great work today. And now for the elite men, your top three finishers. Riding for the Fountain Cycling Guild, your bronze medalist, Chris Wilson. Chris Wilson. Riding for team Liquid Velo. Holding on to that second place, your silver medalist is John Bowie. And riding for team Cycles West. With an impressive solo break to win the International Omnium today, your champion, Eric Deertons. And that'll just about do it for us here, folks. No more awards to present, no more medals for tonight. Racing picks back up again tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Another thanks to our racers for a great evening of racing. We managed to piece together a pretty good program despite some of the chaos and casualties. We really appreciate all the effort going in behind the scenes to make this happen today and look forward to concluding Fred's Race Racing Weekend tomorrow with more racing, the team sprints, team pursuits, and of course the match sprint tournament coming up tomorrow at 10 in the morning. That will not be an early awakening at all. <laughs> all right, folks, I'm signing off. Thanks again.